G'day, folks. I'm laughing my backside off because we are talking not about the Legion of the First Prince, and that's making me laugh. I'm here with uh, Sean Sire, who uh, is an absolute legend in Legion of the First Prince. And it's an actually interesting faction because it has no battle tome. It's actually in this book. It was a Broken Realms book that was brought out last year that I can only hope will be turned into a real legitimate book. But we're here to talk about a faction that is quite a good faction, but either one, people don't know about it, or two, it's quite complicated. And we'll explain a little bit about why it's complicated, because it's like a big soup of chaos. But before I get into that, uh, and, you know, a friend of the channel, and you might have recognized Sean from Warhammer Weekly. It is Sean. Sean, g'day. Hello, Coach. Pleasure to be here. Oh, he, he's making he's making me blush. He was asking me, uh, he told me to put the guns away and tell me to, uh, asking if this is like a designer beard with all my, um, a, a pattern. So I was laughing my backside off. It's no, no, it's, it's not design. I don't go to the barber to get this pattern in. <laughs> Well, I'm going to keep making it blush for a second here because I do want to take the time at the top to thank you for everything you've done for the community, for putting out these videos, for hosting the Discord, letting all these international connections happen. The community is very grateful for it. And anytime that I'm going to play a, a match against a, a faction that I haven't played regularly, I know there's an AOS coach video for it. So I really appreciate all the hard work you've done. Thank you. Well, uh, much appreciated. And you're gonna, now going to contribute to that because you, as somebody who is um, doing really well in the match play area, and the reason why you're here, obviously, is you are very much one of the thought leaders when it comes to Legion of the First Prince. It's a faction I mentioned a little bit earlier. I'll put a bit of context onto the faction, and I want you to kind of explain a little bit about who on earth is Legion of the First Prince? So I mentioned a little bit earlier, it is from the Broken Realms book. It was a sub-faction or a faction that was kind of opened up. It's not in Slaves to Darkness. It's not in Blades of Corn or anything. But what it does is it brings the demons of chaos together in a single faction. So if you're somebody who either plays 40K, and I believe Demons of Chaos is a faction in 40K, or if you're someone who loves Slanesh and Nurgle and you want to find a way to put them together, this is the way it's not an ally thing it's not like hey i'm going to find 400 points of allies to chuck in x faction it is literally bringing together almost like a cities of sigma for chaos but tell me who on earth is this faction and what is it all about yeah cities uh for, the, for chaos is actually a really great way to think of it um and in fact there are no allies when you go to the app and you click allies <laughs> nothing shows up it's either able to get in here or it's not um so Legion of the First Prince, um, as you mentioned, Coach, is um, a faction that came out originally in the um, uh, Wrath of the Everchosen, the narrative of campaign, course. as um, uh, Legion of Chaos Ascendant. And that was when it was open to all demon keyworded units. So you could have Archeon, um, and he was part of the narrative in that. Um, you could have um, all the Vermin Lords who are demon keyworded. Um, you could have the... Uh, um, the so Zeech Wizard, um, the guy that brought in Pinks. Um, I forget his name because I never use it. Gaunt Summoner, never use him anymore because he's not eligible. Um, so just anything with the demon keyword you could bring in. And so with uh, Broken Realms Bellacore, they um, they tweaked it a little bit. They elevated Bellacore um, and they gave him this awesome new model. So he is a centerpiece um, and that model rightly deserves it. He's model of the year um, for a reason. Of course, he was able to dip so into both AOS and 40K, which I'm sure helped with the votes. Um, but uh, but he's going to be central to this army. I have, I have never made a list without Bellacor. I have not maybe seen one or two lists without Bellacor. And the first question that you get, um, especially in the AOS coach chat for leading the first prince, is where's Bellacor? <laughs> because he brings so much to the army. Um, not running him is actually a, a serious detriment um, but to, to what you can do um, to the army of Legion's abilities. Plus, he has that War Scroll ability, which uh, Tobias mentioned in your recent show about Nurgle, um, which is just hands down, I think is the best ability in Age of Sigmar. Um, and and, and I, I, would not, I would not sacrifice that um, at all. So I would always put him in this. Well, actually, that's a really good, really good shout because I think it was last week I talked to Tobias on Maggotkin of Nurgle. So not Legion, it was Maggotkin. And he was explaining all the benefits of bringing in Bellacor as an ally, giving up disease points and all of the ward safe stuff and all the beautiful things that the actual mm -hmm. faction would give in order to oh, obviously don't you know, basically the 400 points doesn't get it right as opposed to getting something naturally. But 
Um, it's actually really interesting, Sean, because um, I, I actually completely forgot about Chaos Ascendant. I remember they brought Chaos Ascendant and there was another faction. They kind of merged it all together to become what is now called Legion of the First Prince. Mm -hmm. But it actually takes me back. I don't know how OG you are, but I am an OG gangster from the mean streets of fantasy battles. Mm -hmm. And I don't so know if you know this, but back in the day, back in the day, actually, Chaos was split this way. Warriors oh, nice. of Chaos and Demons of Chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And that is really how i see legion of the first prince mm -hmm. because this is actually the world i grew up in when, when i actually used to play slanesh and zinch so when i played chaos it was actually zinch slanesh mm -hmm. um and it was a combined force so age of sigma was the first time they actually split it out and you had mm -hmm. the four gods so this kind of just reminds me of coming back together yeah, it's kind of a homecoming for you which is nice um yeah, and, and this this army I think is 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 a lot of fun because you do have the ability to pull from all these different scrolls and find all these different synergies. It's very difficult um, for folks to get into though I think because of the high cost of entry. Like people like me, I was already collecting all the chaos demons because I love them, and so I was running them individually, and I could just throw them in and kind of you know get the pieces that I needed to fill out the the roster. But folks coming to this army fresh, um, trying to figure out what to buy and just thinking about, oh my gosh, this is, this is going to be a ton of money to have all the options that I want. It can be rather daunting, which is why I think that some people have been sort of drawn to a specific list that has been dominant so far since the uh, Broken Realms Bellicor came out because it gives you an easy you know, purchase these five, six models, have this and you're good to go. But there's been a lot more exploration um, by folks in um, the you know the AOS Coach Discord chat, um, and that we found a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, and so that a lot of folks, like even now, on this this one's titled Fury Licious, people in the, the LFP chat are like, "How do I find Furies? <laughs> How do I play with these Furies? Um, what, what's some good? Is is there any good 3D printed proxies if they know they're not going to a GW event?" Um, and so there's been a and it, it's interesting to see that conversation change over time. Yeah, no, and, and good, good segue because the title of this episode is Furylicious, and and that's because we're talking not we won't necessarily just talk about furies, but I know you've found some really interesting list tech. And to respond to what you just said before, you, I, we kind of get into like what are they good at, strengths, weaknesses, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Is I think one really exciting thing for me uh, for Legion of the Prince, for First Prince, is if I'm a corn player, for example, right. And I'm really unhappy with my allegiance abilities. I'm disappointed with the White Dwarf edition. And I have 2,000 points of corn demons. I can just bring over the, literally the whole list, literally pick up the list and play it in a very different style under Legion of the First Prince. I don't need to buy Zinch. I don't need to buy Nurgle. I don't need to buy Bellacore. I can literally just port the same army, no changes. Now, if I want to dig deep, I want to get a, a um, I don't know, a, Glade Unclean One. I want to get mm. um, Kairos. I want to get myself a Sloppity Bile Piper. Mm. Cool. It's also up to you, right? Yeah. And, and the good thing is that even if you did that, you know, transfer from corn. Um, oh, hey, Baby, Baby Boy Jay's in the chat. Good. Uh, uh, he's got a great Slanesh themed, uh, Slanesh based. Uh, and actually, it's a good example because he came from Slanesh to Legion of the First Prince. And so he brought all of his Slanesh over and then started purchasing some stuff and slowly building in. And that's just wonderful. That, I mean, that's exactly what you're talking about, Coach, with that, with corn. And then, of course, if you get Bellacore, which you should, um, it's your first purchase. And then if you do purchase something like, like Furies, I mean, those things, they're liable in all these other factions. So you're not, you're not purchasing something that you're not going to get play with when corn, you know, in two or three years actually gets a good book. Bellacore, at least as of now, can slot in there as an ally. So you're, you're not going to be purchasing a bunch of stuff that you can't shift over later you don't yeah 100 do no and that, that that's a, that's the point what i wanted to make was that you don't have to go and get the internet list right you know mm -hmm. uh if anyone is familiar with legion of the first prince it'll often have bellacore it'll have a corn demon prince it'll have maybe kairos i know people have been playing with their great unclean one and mm -hmm. taking advantage of the 15 nurgling attacks you know they'll they you know there used to be a time where it was all about pink horrors but speaking of pink horrors, the other cool thing as well is as armies get releases, so when Maggot Kid of Nurgle got changed, all of a sudden Nurgle might become more attractive or less attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, when Slanesh gets a new book, all of a sudden Legion of the First Prince benefits. Sure. Again, it's literally Cities of Sigma. When Stormcast got boosts, Cities mm -hmm. got a boost. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have five books uh, when everyone else gets one. So it's pretty sweet. Um, 
And, and I mean, you mentioned just real quick, I kind of want to throw this out as sort of the baseline, right? We talk about you know, what people have considered the list since the Broken Realm Bellacor came out. It was Bellacor, Kairos, um, usually a Bloodthirster of Insensate Rage, Corn Demon Prince, and then you would have, you know, usually horrors, um, maybe some plague bearers, some flesh hounds. But those are sort of the four big you have the number of spell portal. Um, and so the idea was very much of a of a control list, trying to find a way to stop your opponent from doing what they wanted to do. Um, and as I've mentioned, um, um the, the I'm I'm not a fan of the demon prince for many reasons because he, you know, he, he stops perhaps the charge and has the run, but that doesn't do anything at shooting, doesn't do anything against um uh, magic mortal wounds. And and so um that's never been a list that I've played. Um, and but what we've seen, like I mentioned in the chat, is that things have been sort of pushed out from that. Um, and it's good, it's great to see people sort of branching out. Um, say, well, if I didn't take the demon prince, what could I take instead? Um, and uh, and it, there's it's such a reactive um, uh, faction. Um, there's so much, the bench is so deep, there's so much play you can get out of it. Yeah. Um, and what I love is a, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about a, a list that I've been, you know, playing lately. Um, what I love about it is that um, you can react to the meta and then you can sort of, you, you can push in different ways um, uh, and your, your opponents just aren't expecting it. Um, and and I'm, we've had a conversation already, Coach, on, on the Discord that I firmly believe if we're not, the Horde meta is like right here. It's like right around the corner. I'm, 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 I'm getting more and more convinced as I'm seeing five models in an army, six models I'm in testing. an army. I'm testing a list next week. I'm testing. Um, I'm I'm dipping my toes into the water with Scraggy and Craggy. So Cragnos, mm -hmm. Scragrot, and then about a hundred goblins. So I'm going nice. to try a little. I'm not. I'm not going completely in. But mm -hmm. again, like whether we go into a magic meta, whether we go into a horde meta, resiliency meta, we go into a shooting meta, we go into mm -hmm. a combat meta. I think it's awesome that you can pull things forward and back and you need some shooting. Cool. I'll get some flamers. I need mm -hmm. movement. Cool. I've got screamers. I need anti-magic. Well, I've got fl uh, flesh hounds. There are so much that you can play around with as a person who likes to counter attack and likes the list tech. Mm -hmm. Legion of the First Prince is a great ability. And I just want to shout out like Andy here in the chat, you know, backing me up and going, well, you know, I got frustrated with corn. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I can move my demons over and play a corn army in Legion of the First Prince, which is which is really yeah. cool. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just the flexibility is great, and and but it's it's you know people purchasing the models, painting the models, um, and, and and getting the the practice in to seeing what works. Um, and I recognize that, that can be a, a limitation, um, but I think I think we're starting to see that shift. So talk to me about what what they're good at, right? So you know you've sold me the sausage sizzle. It's cooking on the gas, and I'm now excited. I've, I haven't maybe picked up the book, and I'm now interested at least mm -hmm. putting over my army or starting mm -hmm. afresh. Okay. What am um, I good at? We know we know flexibility. We know flexibility deep roster. Yeah. We know those mm -hmm. for a fact. Um, well, depending on how you tailor it, you're very good at you are good at denying your opponent um, uh, the ability to do certain things. So the the what was the basically the stock list that we've seen um, since Bellico came out? Uh, you have Kairos being able to flip a dice, um, do whatever he wants. You've got the Corn Demon Prince having um, uh, uh, charge rolls. So there um, there are, and of course Bellico's ability where the Dark Master, where he can you know, point to something and say you can't do anything, and you, know, you roll a dice, and on a three up. Um, in every phase of the opponent's turn, they can't do something. It, you choose it on their hero phase, and it lasts until your next hero phase, the Bellacore player. So if you time it right, you, you know you give them priority, um, and then you double turn. Uh, they double turn you with something locked down for two out of their five turns. Um, and so you do have the ability to really make your opponent not play the game plan they wanted to. Um, but that that list is not the only way that you can do that. Um, that's that's one way you can do that. Uh, the, the list that I've been running with 48 Furies is another way to do that. Um, uh, it's, it's just a different different way. Um, and so it's, it's very good at, um, at playing the sort of cagey game, um, which I like. Uh, I always go with um, uh, you know, sort of like the stealth approach whenever I play RPGs or playing Elden Ring, I'm doing more of a, a stealthy avert, uh, character in that. And so this kind of feels that way to me. You know, it's that we're not going to be so much up front. We're going to sneak around. We're going to stab in the back. Um, and so they're really good at that. They're also really good at taking a hit, um, depending on how you build the army. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you want to talk about the allegiance abilities real quick, because that is going to kind of factor well, I, I'll definitely get out the allegiance abilities in, in a minute. I, I do want to kind of find out maybe their weakness first. I think mm -hmm. 
I think one weakness I will call out, and um, this particular person is a spiral dancer, mm. made an interesting comment, which maybe maybe is true. And um, they had mentioned that the Great Unclean One is overcosted in Legion of the First Prince. And I partially probably agree with that because the, the Great Unclean One is 500 points, right? Mm. And when you look at it in Maggot King of Nurgle, it's a big wound. It heals D3. It has a great access to spells. It has all these great things, right? 500 points is probably about right. Give or take, I don't know, 50 points. Like, mm. right. But but there is no points difference between a great unclean one in Legion of the First Prince versus a great unclean one in Nurgle. And sometimes in that department, you will get bargains. Sometimes you'll, you'll be mm. overpaying, right? So, and I just want to call out one more thing. Paper, uh, paper boy Jason mentioning if you are a J J sorry, if you are a magic player, yeah, it's absolutely a mm -hmm. blue deck. It's very much a control type mm -hmm. style of of army. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if anyone's interested, I'm like a barbarian. I just like to run forward and smash, which is why I play Gargans. And you're the kind of person I love to play with this army. <laughs> like, yes, come at me, bro. Let's see what happens. Um, but I, I I think that um, you know the point about the duo. Um, is, is good and it's also something to, to keep in mind with other things as new books come out because not only are you not taking advantage of all the the nurgle legion abilities which are factored into the points of the guo but you're also um one of his war scrolls on the new update now gives um disease just like the beasts of nurgle they used to they have two things that gave d3 now they have one that gives disease i think it's when they retreat um and so uh so they're they're factoring things into the war scrolls now that are allegiances in their prime um faction but those Allegiance, those, those factored in abilities don't apply to Legion. So you're actually paying a points cost for something that you can't take advantage of. So, I mean, you really just have to decide if that's worth it um, as a Legion player when you're making your list um, uh, to take that cost or not. Uh, the good thing is that we have a lot of options. Um, so if one thing, it doesn't look as, as good, um, we can always look somewhere else, which is really nice. One, one question maybe that's very timely and um, but then, then I want to bring up the list and it's very timely because the battle scroll update. So it was March. We got a games workshop update with something mm -hmm. called primary target. So priority targets and prime hunters. Yeah. And it feels like, I don't know how you, how you felt, but it feels like this was very targeted against the Legion of the first Prince because Bellacore got, uh, is going to give away one additional victory point when it dies to a non priority target he's not gonna die <laughs> but but i know what you're saying yeah he's on he's on the list yeah um, especially yeah, if like, also, i'm into another faction was it pink horrors as well was another one mm -hmm. uh was the demon prince of corn on it he it was is. a couple and yeah. I, I remember looking at going like kairos I, yeah kairos there was like all right looking at this list for chaos and i'm like legion 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 mm -hmm. like because all these other stuff is kind of okay in other factions, mm. but together you're giving away a lot of extra VP if it's not killed by priority targets like long strikes, mm. um, uh, mega gargants. They're all they're all the same. Yeah. The, uh, How do you feel? Well, when I saw that come out, I looked at it and I said, "Okay, they're targeting that list in Legion." Because that I'm, I'm not playing that except for Bellacor, I have not been playing those things um, for a long time actually, um, and so. They're, they're targeting the list that looks like it's doing really well and it's dominating, but we have so much other play and other things. Um, and I, I really feel bad, actually, for Zeech players getting the pink horror hit and the Kairos hit because that's really nothing that they did. <laughs> it's really the, the people going towards this one list. And so if you're running demons, I mean, your, your demon battle line in, in Zeech I mean, it's not, the only the only time I'm running horrors now since that FAQ came out is in the block of twenty, um, because that that's that's a hundred wounds that they're gonna have to chew through um, before they. And I've got the soul screen bridge to pull them out of combat if I need to and throw them somewhere else to prevent that extra DP. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that I think Zeech kind of kind of got unnecessarily a hit on this. Yeah, it's it's actually funny because someone pulled me up in the comments for my uh my video on it, right? And they're like, Oh, you're picking on Zinch. I'm like, Well, kind of yeah, like actually after like six years, like pink horrors have always been a problem in in um mm -hmm. games workshops eyes. I've constantly tried to address it. And I kind of felt at the winter FAQ, they kind of fixed them up. I'm like, Yeah, they're kind of okay now. Like I don't hate them. By the way, I have 40 pink horrors in my cupboard. And I've got like a million horrors, right? I'm like I say this with love. Just but 40? in legions of 
Uh, yeah, I've only got 40, but I've got like, yeah, like any, but half of them are like old school ones, like the old metal ones, like with oh, the nice. scary arm. Yeah, I've yeah. got like three generation of pinks. But yeah, in Legion, like I, I can feel them like, yeah, I can feel they're trying to target that particular mm -hmm. list. Does yeah. it, and, and I guess what I'm hearing from you is if I'm a Legion player, either A, persist with that style of list if I'm, I'm enjoying it, mm -hmm. or B, maybe it's time to consider looking into some of the other things is the the double wound plague bearers now worth considering is there something Ooh. else in the faction that maybe you should move away with so you don't give away as many victory points yeah yeah exactly i mean the way that i used to play horrors is they would go forward right and they would hold an objective and they would take the hit um which they do really well and this allegiance does take a hit pretty well it's got a six up ward across the allegiance um if you use the or anything holy within eight so it's really good for protecting your heroes your monsters your key pieces from a uh, um you know a, a top of one shooting alpha um and so it, it does take a hit really well but I, you can no longer just throw those pinks in there and be okay they're going to die in three turns right because that 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 victory point you know it looks you're thinking it was only one but one here one there one here um and uh and you know some of these missions give you an extra one on the three you know so these all add up and then at the end of the game you'd be like damn i really wish i wouldn't have given away that extra point from the pink so um so yeah if you're if you're running that list i would say continue to do so you've got to play a little more you know a little more cagey um but there's also so many things that you can slot in and not have to worry about that um the list that i you know the, the three bt list that i was playing um it had uh, a unit of pinks and two units of dogs so it just had bellacore and the pinks that would give up a vp now uh, and then um, the 48 Furies list I'm playing now just has Bellacore, and that's it. Mm. So I wouldn't be giving up anything except for him. I, I will I will remind everybody that that if Bellacore dies, for example, um, and is killed by a priority target, mm. like Long Strikes, uh, Forminators, there's like a whole list of them, Gatebreaker, Mega Gargant. If they kill each other, then you don't give away that extra VP. So yep. just it's, it's more for things that are not priority targets. Mm. So... And that's actually really good when you're thinking when you, when you're in the middle of a game when you're playing where do you want to send some of these priority targets in because if they're going to die it sit, let me kill by one of these other priority targets um, that's the same thing like whenever I've got um, a unit of plague bear or a unit of a uh, flesh hounds they're my weakest battle line you know five wounds or, or ten wounds a five up save um, I will take them on my turn and throw them into something that'll wipe them out because that way I can't give away broken ranks they can't declare mm. broken ranks on my turn. So I sacrifice that unit on my turn, and their broken ranks, their, their easy broken ranks ability is gone. So Hearing the list techie side of this, uh, this is what I'm I'm digging right. And um, by the way, this isn't the only video we've got. I know we did one uh, maybe six months ago with Tyler Pearson, who who gave his thoughts as well. So I think you know you're getting a couple of different options. And by no means um, are we saying that any of this stuff is the one and only way. If Sean loves, you know. Um, furies doesn't mean go buy all the furies uh if we don't like your favorite faction doesn't mean that we don't think it's good it's just that from a competitive lens right now probably doesn't make sense but hey you know you might have some good ideas but i i want to kind of talk about the faction abilities right just, just you really know, quick they, before you move away from that i do want to say my, my, my mantra is you know try it you know, people come into the lfp chat and they say what about this what about this i'm like run it run it let us know how it works keep these things in mind um, I am a big uh, advocate of experimenting with this allegiance. There's no way that we have found all of the uh, synergies and everything yet. Um, and I want people to just keep trying things out. And what's great as well is you've got things like tabletop simulators. So you don't have to go out and buy all of the demons if you want to test something and you want to proxy. Play something like tabletop simulator, proxy it on the table with your friends, uh, and prepare yourself for a tournament. So you've got four key key rule abilities, right? You've got unyielding legions, which, um, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll get you to kind of explain a little bit about, it's less about the rule. It's more about how do you look at these rules? You know, what are the, what are important to you and what do you build around? What are the ones that are like nice to haves, but not necessarily priority to you? Mm -hmm. So you've got unyielding legions, you've got cursed skies, you've got first damned prince, and then you've got the infernal walk, uh, realm master, walker. Mm -hmm. I can't read today. Um, right. <laughs> what, what what is it in the allegiance ability that you are a must have, and how do you look at this? Um, well, so before I switched up recently to this other to this new list and this new approach, um, the uh, curse skies 
never happened because Bellacor had to be a general for that. And I was not running Bellacor as a general because I was very much running a sort of hero hammer list, um, especially with the three BTs. And I wanted something to have the Ruinosaurus, the five up board bubble. Um, and of course, because he's named, he can't take that. And so I would, I was mm. not running Bellacor as the general. And in fact, so the Cursed Skies, you know, it says here, you know, you, uh, every Battleshock phase, you roll a dice for every unit on the board. Uh, that's the Furies, Demonettes, Plague Bearers, um, uh, Bloodletters, and Horrors. We'll get to Horrors in a minute because they're, they're a corner case. Um, but you roll a dice and, uh, at, at, during, at the end of the Battleshock phase, so they've already taken their Battleshock test. And on a three up, you get to bring back D3 models. So what's... So that was something I was like, well, I was running pinks, pinks because of the new war scroll, they aren't slain until they go down to brims. So you can only bring brims back. And this is this was put out there to compensate for the pre uh, before this last revision for horrors. So it limits you to one. So you can only bring back mm -hmm. one brim. So I was like, well, I'm running pinks anyway. I've got all these heroes. I want the five aboard. I'm not going to run Bellacor as a general. I'm running Bellacor as a general now. And it is awesome. <laughs> it's just, but but in order to do that, I've had to change my list, right? I've had to I've had to move away from the hero heavy stuff, not miss the five up board. I've had to move away from horrors as being um, the, the go to, uh, and from flesh hounds because you see flesh hounds are not on that option for cursed skies. Flesh hounds are battle yeah. line. They're uh, they're probably one of our best battle lines um, because of the board space they take up and the the points cost. I think they're one of five, um, so the cheapest that we have. Um, but, uh, but they can't come back. So because I've changed, and this is, I think a really good example of how Legion of the First Prince is just this vast thing that can go in all these different directions. Um, because I've changed the list, I brought, brought in Bellacor as the general. Um, and then because I brought Bellacor in the general, therefore I'm changing the, the list. Right. So, um, but th it's, it's the same allegiance, the same abilities, but it's a completely different play style than what I did before. Um, the 48 Furies list that I'm running now, I've had people just be like, I've played several games where afterwards the opponent has said, you are not playing Warhammer like anyone else I played Warhammer against. They're like, I don't know what game you're playing. <laughs> and so it's, it's, and so someone said I was playing chess while they were playing Call of Duty. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's just a completely different way to think of the game. Um, but this allegiance lets you do that as well as these other lists and these other approaches, if you want to hero hammer, which is why I just love this allegiance so much because it's got, it's that sort of like this never-ending well, it feels like, where you go explore this, go try this out. Um, mm. And that's why I keep pushing people to try a new list, because if we're just kind of locked in that you know, net list that we got when Bellacore came out, we don't get to experience and try all these new things. And the meta is going to change. And if we as an allegiance stay locked in that one thing, it's going to change your response, and we need to change your response to it. Um, that was a lot. I'm sorry, I just kind of threw that out there. No, 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 no. It's, it's good. It is good. And uh, again, it kind of goes back to the fact that um, this is one way of looking at it because if I just wanted to smash, right? If I just want mm -hmm. to build a combat force that goes forward and smashes, I could. I could have a combination of Keeper of Secrets and um, and Bloodthirsters and a bunch of Battle Line if I want to go down that route. Yep. If I want to tap into, like I said, movement, right? Rural good movement shenanigans. Like there's so mm -hmm. much you can tap into, which is why I wanted to kind of get your thinking, right? So yeah. Bellacor obviously take advantage of the cursed skies. Mm -hmm. uh, he's certainly good, but obviously keeping in mind the changes to the demon, so the, the horrors. Mm -hmm. Your faction obviously gets a six up ward save, which is great, right? Everyone across yeah. the board gets a ward. If Bellacor is not the general, there is a command trait to get a five. Uh, is it a five yeah. bubble, right? Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Five up, uh, five up board with the holder within eight inches of the general with that uh, command trait. Um, so infernal world markers is great. It's nothing that you can bank on. I mean, a six up, yeah, it's it's one in six chance. It's not going to happen all the time for sure. Um, the first damn prince is um, great. Um, and actually, let's get to unyielding legions first. We're going to leave the first damn. I think we should leave that for last. Um, but the, sure. the un unyielding legions is. It's the best summoning, I think, in Age of Sigmar, um, hands down. It's like I move a, a hero, I roll three dice. If I roll 10 or higher on those three dice, I get to bring in a unit keyed to that hero. Um, and it just happens. Um, there's there's no sort of precondition. I don't have to build up fate points. I don't have to do any of this garbage. Um, I just I just do it. And Bellacor goes 14 inches. All right, he can auto run six, so he's going to go 20 inches. This summon, Bellacor can bring in anything, any of these, including Furies, unit six Furies, um, which he couldn't do under Legion of Chaos Ascendant. He was undivided and he was not a summoning platform. Now he is. So you can auto run him 20. 
if he wrote, you know, you, you have to choose who you're going to come in off of. So you say, I'm going to try to do a yielding legions off of Bellacor. Roll your three dice. If you get a 10 or higher, that unit can then come in wholly within 12 of him. So that's 32 inches that you can be back on your line, go 32 inches, and have something out there taking up space. Um, it's just, it's an amazing ability, especially with all of our very, very fast heroes. And one of the other cool options, I was just, I was going to ask you, is there any ways to modify that 10 up? And I can see there is a command trait called Primordial Commander that mm. your general gets plus one to the roll. So you get yeah. a, that on a nine up. Yeah. And that, that's, I mean, that's statistically it's, it is a change, but I don't know if it's enough of a change to not either have Bellacor as a general or Ruinous Aura. The only, th so it's tricky because the changes to Pink's has, uh, Pink's being a priority tar priority target has really kind of messed up our stomach, summons a little bit. Because you could bring in five horrors. That is a unit of five horrors. And according to the, the Hunt FAQ that came out, it's just a unit of Pink's. It's not a unit of... And so you bring in a unit of five, that's 25 wounds, that can easily be killed um uh in, in this current meta and so you've just brought in the ability for them to get a free victory point when they kill that unit um it's more it, i used to be a go-to i'm going to bring in pinks all the time like why wouldn't i but now it's much more situational so when you look at prime uh, primordial commander the ability to go from a 10 to a 9 i would always think okay i want to put that on something fast moving like um the uh the flux master or um the one on the chariot does each hero on the chariot um, because they're going to go out there, they can be your general, you're going to get that, that that fast movement and be able to bring in pinks. And now, because pinks aren't as good of a summons for the reason of giving up a VP, it makes Primordial Commander, to me, even less attractive. Um, putting on something like a Slopity Biopiper, who's five wounds, will more than likely die pretty quickly, and can't give you that range for when you summon, um, it, th that I wouldn't consider that to be an option um, for, for Primordial Commander. So, um, so to me, the, the fact they've changed pinks the way they have um, makes that even less of a take for, my, for a, a, a command trait. And it's probably worth calling out as well. And I think this is like, do I take Bellacore? Do I not take Bellacore? To get the five up ward and to get the plus one to the, um, to the summon, they're actually conflicting uh, abilities, right? So you either you've either got one command trait mm -hmm. or the other. You can't get yeah. both. So again, it kind of forces you down that argument of like taking Bella Core because it is good value, mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessarily you don't have to. But it's certainly um, a very good option, especially for the points and what it brings to Legion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, Paperboy Jay mentioning that, you know, they feel pinks are a trap now and plague bearers are a great summoning. Because that was going to be my next question is if if pinks aren't the best option right now, in your opinion, what would be? Like, would you mm. be summoning or when would you be summoning demonettes, mm. uh, blood letters? Or is it like furies from Bellacor, plague bearers because you get 20 wounds essentially? Because the yeah. plague bearers went up from one to two wounds now. Mm. Yeah, I would I would be doing players, but so so that everything in this army is, is connected in some way, shape, or form. So when you're looking at the summons, you then have to look at the heroes because the summons are key to the heroes. So in list list creation, you have to say okay. Um, but the problem with bringing Nurgle, um, uh, with bringing play bears, is most of those are going to be tied to a very slow moving Nurgle hero <laughs> or mm. to Bellacor, right? Bellacor being the 14 inch move, um, and so it's. You need to think about what you want to summon uh, because they threw in that pink skip one VP. It, the summoning now becomes something that you have to consider with this army. Um, and so you need to more carefully consider your, uh, I think you need to more carefully consider your heroes. I've brought in demonettes a few times. Um, I did it once in order to actually get the um, the first damn prince, the first part of the first damn prince where you reroll attacks. Um, I've, I've been able to do that on a couple occasions. Uh, and I, I just had to bring in the, the demonettes in order to, to complete that. Uh, that that group of four um and i've also brought them in when i needed to make a charge um, i was playing a, a mega gargant army against uh, kyle at an rtt he was a great player beautifully painted army um it was a really fun game and i, I was paired with him first round and i was like great this is exactly the one i didn't want to play against um it was a 48 furies list and i'm like there's no way i'm going to be able to kill any of these things um but i was able to summon in a unit of uh, a demonettes and I actually dropped his unit of three, um, three baby gargants, and I was able to drop a mega gargant in that game. And I did it because I had Bellacor on one end, I had Furies along another end, 
and then I summoned demonettes and rerolled the charge and got them in. So they bracketed him. He went on his turn, and even though he has long shanks, he actually couldn't go get over outside of three. So he was trapped. And so I ended up attacking him again with everything on his turn and, and dropping the, the mega. So being able to being able to get that unit in because they do have the, the reroll the summons, and they are pretty much our best our reroll charge, and they're pretty much they're one of our better combat units, uh, the demonettes. Um, the the play bear, I mean, not play bears, the, uh, uh, the blood letters, the fact that they're one inch and 32 just really, really hurts in the new coherency rules. Um, but yeah, but demonettes do, I think, have, have some play. The question, the question is, are you also bringing in a, a hero than Bellacor that can summon them? Um, because Slanesh Keeper Secrets is really expensive. Um, especially mm -hmm. since you're you're paying for the the double tapping sixes, right? And you're I mean, there's there's a lot that you're paying for in the allegiance that you're not getting here. Um, the mask though is a, a hero that I've run, which I would use as a summoning platform for demonettes. Um, uh, especially since she can go, she can move so quickly um, and just get up into their deployment and bring out demonettes right at the beginning. Um, and plays the control the control game as well. Like, there's definitely some good minor heroes that I tap into from Corn and from from um, Slanesh but definitely oh, yeah. zinch is definitely like a clear winner um as is nurgle but i think mm. you you've made some really good points because one of the things that has happened if you haven't looked at nurgle lately since the new um battle tome is that they have indeed become much much slower and mm, the way so, that so. even they interact with the feculent numbers has fundamentally changed yeah um you know the contoured epitome that's the uh, paper boy jay that's exactly the other one i was going to call out the contoured epitome is another great option yeah. um as a minor hero yeah, she's really good. Um, and I think the only other religious ability we had was the the second part of the the first Dane Prince, which is the um, so everyone gets a six up. Um, but whenever you allocate a wound or a mortal wound to Bellacor, pick a friendly unit with a nine. That's I. That's one of the um, the the summonable um, uh, battle line types on a four plus. That wound or mortal wound is allocated to that unit instead. So because of the fire slayer hero that just came out, that's that's really kind of destroyed any sort of debate there was about this. Um, so Bellacor will get his unrendable save, the four up unrendable. Um, anything that gets through the four up unrendable, he will then do a, if he's within nine, he'll do a four up um, allocation roll. Um, whatever gets a four or higher goes to that unit, they then will have their ward save on a six up. And then Bellacor will have a six up ward save for anything that didn't get allocated to that unit. Um, so he is super duper tanky. Um, he, if, if he dies, if Bellacor dies and you're playing Reason the First Prince, you've got bigger problems. <laughs> there's there's something that's fundamentally gone wrong in that game um, for him to have died. Um, either you've played him entirely too aggressively, um, or something was wrong with deployment or something. Uh, because because he's he's super tanky. Um, and also uh, was he fourteen wounds? Fourteen wounds. Fourteen wounds. Fourteen four wounds. Up, four, four up, up wound save. Today. Six up ward and can four. bounce wounds. Yeah. yeah, four up and rentable save four up allocation or, or, or bodyguard and then a six up ward um, or a five up if he's in the range of the ruin of Sora. So he's, he's pretty tough. Um, the, uh, the one thing that I would point out is that I try to make sure either he's next to a unit of pinks or he's got two, I mean, the current list that I'm running with the 48 furies where he's the general um, because I'm doing that bounce back. I try to make sure that he's within nine of two units of plague bearers, because if you notice that, that allegiance ability, it says that, you know, you pick the unit and Everything that he sh that he uh, shrugs to them has got to go to that one unit, and, and and he has to make that that bodyguard roll. You can't say, "Oh, I'm not going to make that roll." No, it's not option. It, yeah. It's a, it's a must. It's an yeah. it's not optional. And so, if you have two different sources of damage coming at you, like say at the shooting phase, you're getting hit with one thing. I will send those shrugs to one unit of play bears, and then I get hit with something else. I'll shrug to the other unit of play bears, and then I'll take you know six six wounds. It's going to be three models. So I could then, at the end of my battle shock phase, bring back D3 for each instead of dumping everything into one. Does that make sense? Yeah, and no, I'm just yeah. rereading the second part of the because I remember you had that contentious discussion on Warhammer Weekly with the mm -hmm. first damned prince. Yeah, uh, and I'm just rereading the text okay. and looking because you know traditionally anything with a bodyguard you cannot um, you cannot do a ward save after you've allocated. And I know there was some discussion around mm -hmm. um, does that does does this particular wording mm -hmm. break that yeah. cycle? So, and well, I know Fire Slayers definitely did change it with some mm -hmm. specific wording. 
Yeah, and there is, I think it's a core, it's a coral. Oh, I should have written down somewhere 1.6. Um, but where, where it talks about one point, uh, 14.1, it talks about words, it says, unless otherwise stated, words always happen before allocation. So the unless otherwise stated or unless stated otherwise is really important. And then also in the core rules, I think it's, it's I think it's 1.6, where it talks about abilities that allegiance and worse scroll abilities always um, supersede core rules. Yes. So, uh, so everything in the Broken Realms, Bellacor and the Bellacor allegiance, that is spelled out crystal clear as to what the sequencing is whenever Bellacor takes uh, takes damage or has, has an attack incoming. Um, so I know that there's still some, you know, talk to your TO about it, but I know that the AOS Worlds, I think, has ruled that he does get... Yeah, we're, we're, Ned, Ned, we're not getting into this discussion. Literally no, watch. Sean, no. I was literally just going to say, um, talk to your tournament organizer. That's probably no. the only thing, you know, I mean, it's good until FAQ'd otherwise, there's good arguments on either side. Talk to your TO with Alec word, word allocation. I think Fire Slayers does give us hope um, mm, that yeah. that's clarified a little. Yeah, let's move exactly. on. Let's, let's move on. Let's, I can please. see people. People are freaking out. Going, no. <laughs> I spend a lot board. of time talking about this, and I've I've stopped actually. People people ask, and I let other folks in the chat take over. Um, yeah, I had a presentation. Literally, like I don't have the presentation up, folks. We're not going to go through a uh, Vince Ventrella style. This is why wards do or do not happen. Yeah. Um, before I get into your list, mate, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Like when it comes to the current meta, right? You know, mm -hmm. whether it is the shooting meta with, you know, bow snakes, long strikes, cruel boys, bloody everything, like all this shooting stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We've got dragons running around. We've got formulators running around. Um, I was looking at this, you know, I was looking at some of the lists that are coming out of um, Adepticon at the moment. So we've got this emerging meta since the winter FAQ. Um, you know, Nurgle's starting to come up. Like how does Legion of the First Prince as it currently stands, you know, stack up in the local meta or the current meta, sorry, mm -hmm. what the demands are. Well, I don't know if I'm the one you want to ask about this because I love this army and I'm going to champion this army until the day that GW says you can't play it anymore. Um, but I, I, is it top, is it top tier? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's, it's top tier because it has that, just as I've been talking about, it has that flexibility that you can look at the meta, you can see the way the meta is shifting, you can react. Um, it's, we, don't, we don't have to wait for other things to break in order for us to become to be elevated or a new book in order to elevate us. We can um, basically say what's going on, see what's going on, and then adjust accordingly. Um, so I, to me, as the meta evolves, the Legion of the First Prince is going to evolve with it, and it's going to stay top tier. Um, I, I can't imagine that it's going to be it's going to drop because it's just so it's just so deep that the bench is so deep. And, I, and I it, will say I it, will oh. say that I think it's it has potential to be top. I think there's a lot of player skill that comes in that makes it top. So it's not it's not some of the other factions where the list can really just carry yourself to victory. Mm -hmm. This does require a lot of skill, a lot of counterplay, and a lot of thinking. So. It has yeah. the ability, but I don't think it's natively mm -hmm. the top tier, the top tier um, uh, affection. Yeah. I think you're right in that. Is that because Legion of the First Prince? Like, so I listen to a lot of review shows from a lot of uh, folks on YouTube, and you know, the, reading reading New War Scrolls and, and looking at Legion's abilities and talking about them. And what you always hear is, it does it has this many attacks at this much rend, and it does this much damage. That's a good unit. Right? And the Legion of the First Prince doesn't play that way. Like it, we're not we're not going in there and saying we're going to stomp you. How I'm going to I'm going to table you. Um, it's about something completely different. And what I've noticed in my career, um, my career with Legion of the First Prince, uh, about playing Legion of the First Prince, is that I've sort of actually taken that and gone even to a greater extreme in some ways. Like I've actually won, won a game uh, Legion of the First Prince without killing a single enemy unit. Um, and I won that game. Um, and so there's, and I've always thought, you know, AOS is a game about movement. It's about objective uh, capture. And, I, and I, I pulled it off. I was like, yeah, I didn't kill a single. It was OBR. I was like, I'm not going to kill a single one of these units. How do I win? And I won. Um, and so uh, Legion players, like, they're, they come at this, I think, a different way. Like, it's, it's not about how much damage can I do. It's, it's about how do I get the points on the board um, to where I have more than you at the end of the game. And that, that's really a different sort of beast, I think, than like, I mean, I don't want to, I'm not going to stereotype, but if I want to play Iron Jaws, it's about, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to bash. 
I mean, their allegiance ability is smashing and bashing, right? I mean, it's like, yes, that's what we're going to do. And and with 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 Legion of the First Prince, in a lot of ways, like there's been some my 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 turns where it's like I'll go in, do my hero phase, do my movement phase, and then say your turn, because yeah. I've gone up within three inches and I don't charge. I've done what I need to do. I've captured that objective. You're up. And, and that's just a very different way to play than a lot of other people that, that I've played against. Yeah, it's definitely like Paper Boy J, 100%. It doesn't autopilot itself. And that's kind of why I said it's not a top tier. I'm not saying it hasn't got the ability, but it does require you to have some good skills and thinking. And something that is very counterintuitive to a lot of players, and I say this all the time, retreat. People dislike retreating. For some reason, they just love to just grind it out and smash, smash, smash. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the thick of combat, people's options are always smash, smash, smash. All that attack, all that defense. It's never, should I just retreat myself out of combat? And that kind of really come to me um, when I was playing Mega Gargans last year, when I was playing in second edition, mm -hmm. because Gargans aren't that great in combat. They're good, but they're not great. They're very swingy. And the best options actually was for me to be outside of combat, sitting on an objective yep. and playing KG. And this, again, this is why we're not talking about building your list around uh, what um, demonettes and mm -hmm. blood letters and the combat style, you know, take, take, take a couple of bloodthirsters. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. literally coming out of my mouth. It's about the counterplay. It's about the wound mm -hmm. sink. It's about the, the board control. And what I think it, it, it does do really well when you combine, again, why Bellacore and the Corn Demon Prince are so popular in Legion is denial. It's denial of battle tactics. And that will be the difference when you look at some of these big tournaments. You know, I was looking at LVO, for example, and probably you'll come up with Dedepticon and other faction, uh, other, other tournaments. People went 5 and 0 oh and 4 and 1. And the mm. difference between podiums were did you score 5 out of 5 uh, battle tactics? Yeah. And and you play a really good game to stop me from scoring, mm -hmm. you know, broken ranks, you know, uh, slay the warlord. There's a lot of things you can do. Yeah, yeah. And the, the list that I'm playing now, I I don't give up slay, uh, broken ranks with that list. Um, and slay the warlord because Bellacore is your general. They, they're either going to get slay the warlord or they're going to get bring it down. They're not going to get both um, mm -hmm. uh, if, if they're able to do that. And so it's it's one of those things that kind of as I put it together and I've been piloting it and tweaking it, um, just the list itself is denial. <laughs> and so it's, it's, I mean, we'll talk about it in a, in a bit and, and hopefully I can walk through, through that game, but it's, it's a very different beast than anything that I've played before. And I absolutely love it. Well, I think again, and, and, and it's this context that I wanted to bring up. So in order to actually talk about your list um, and I, I wanted to put that context in place because when I look at this list, I'm like, who does damage? Mm -hmm. Like when I look at this and go, Furies die really quickly. Plague bearers have 20, you know, 20, 20 wounds each unit. Mm -hmm. Pink horrors are all right. Like they're, again, they're a wound sink. You know, no, no combat y kind of monster. It's counterintuitive to a lot of players and how they like to build their list. Mm -hmm. But when you actually unpack this and see the secret source and what we've already talked about, a lot of denial. This is where the magic happens, mm -hmm. which is where I'm going to pass the baton on to you and explain that you're, I'll, I'll read out your list for anyone who listens to this later on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And you can tell me a bit about like, what are you trying to achieve here and how does it all work? So mm -hmm. you got Bellacore with the, um, the, the master's command, as well as the blue scribe with master's command. Oh, oh, You've um, got just real quick coach. Bellacore should be the general in this. I don't know. Oh. If, uh, yeah. So he's cool. All right. Yeah. Bellacore is the general. Mm -hmm. Cool. Take put that one in there. You got 20 pink horrors, 10 uh, plague bearers, 10 plague bearers, uh, three units of 12 fury. So you've reinforced them. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, you've also got yourself the Emerald Life Swarm and the Soul Screen Bridge. You've gone double battle regiment. So you've gone down to a two drop. Um, mm -hmm. That artifact shouldn't be there. Ignore, ignore that, yeah. folks. That's no me effect. with a that's, that's me with a failing on a template. Um, 1995 on um, with a lot of wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is this is the first of two lists, right, Coach? Uh, I do believe so. There's a second okay. list after this. Yeah, yeah. This is this is one that sort of a uh, kind of evolved um, out of what I was playing before, and the, the next one is is the one that might go to now. Uh, but and you'll notice that this does not have an artifact. Um, I don't have a um, uh, something a, a hero that I can put an artifact on, and so 
Um, and Bellacor is the general. So he's going to be bringing back um, a D3 on each, on a three up, D3 in each battle shock. So my battle shock and their battle shock. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, they are actually. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to call this comment out from a friend of the channel, the great Book of Grudges, amazing YouTube channel. Um, thanks for dropping in. Um, obviously, a very warm, a fantasy focused channel. And I actually agree with you because, like, um, so the comment is Christ Furies are still a thing. They used to be, a, are they better than a paperweight from what they were in fantasy? And it's very true. At best, they used to like soak up a, a artillery damage, right? You just run them up the board, these five crappy Furies, and. Um, and they just die, right? So, mm -hmm. but yeah. but you've obviously like it's obviously this show is literally fury delicious. So there's some good list taking in here. But sorry, yeah. please continue. Um, and it looks like Paperboy Jay, um, he's drank the Kool Aid, man. He's he, he's seen, he's taken the pill, and he sees behind the wall. He's, <laughs> I love it. Um, and so the uh, so uh, three up, uh, D three from the play bears and the Furies. Um, and that's going to, and so the Furies are not battle line. The battle line are the pink whores and the, the two units of plague bearers. Um, and so the Furies are going to, so the reason I reinforce them, they're unit of six normally, they're reinforced to unit of 12. So, and I don't know if you ended up having any of the picks against with that OBR game or not, coach, but um, what I'm able to do with the Furies is, and you said you love to retreat, you love to retreat. The Furies will let you retreat every combat phase, Coach. This unit is made for you. You're just be all about this unit. Um, every single, it's your combat phase, their combat phase. It's not just the movement phase. Um, so Furies are awesome because okay, there's only five, there's only five turns per game, right? You have got to do everything you need to do to win in five turns. And so what this list does, um, and what the other list does even better. But you have Bellacor, who is stopping them from using a unit either one or two of those five turns, right? So 40% of the time, possibly, that unit is just out of the game. The Cardinals, you only have five different times to move, right? Everything in the, in the game has five different touch points where they can move that unit. It's full. I mean, you've got, you've got um, uh, Redeploy, but that's a D6. Who knows what it's going to be? It's usually a one when I roll it. Um, but the Furies have... Um, they have the option to move every single combat phase. So that's mm -hmm. 10 combat phases plus your five normal movements. Um, and so they have 15 possible movement touch points throughout a game. And that's just insane. Um, they can go anywhere on the board that you want, get into anything that you want. Um, and the fact that there are 12 models in a reinforced unit means that you have a unit of say 10 um, or even five liberators, right? You've got a unit of five liberators. And it's a, all these um, objectives are six inches, right? This, a, a six inch, um, wholly within six. So they have their five liberators on it. And I have to be outside of three of an enemy unit um, when I'm, uh, unless I charge. So I bring my Furies up, and if I just run them or I can get them 12 on their own, they line up right like 5.9 uh, away from the center of that objective. Just shh, there's my unit of 12. I outbody you. That's my objective now. I'm not going to charge you. I don't have to attack. I don't have to do anything like that. I've just capped that objective. Same thing with the unit of 10. My unit of 12 Furies now just capped that objective. Then on your turn, you charge. If you don't go into that unit first, so you've charged this unit of Furies on this objective here, I'm going to then activate them and cower on the other side of that objective. Still within 5.9 of the objective, but out of three. And a way for you to be able to pile in an attack. And so I still own that objective. And so Furies are just going to bounce around all over the place. And when you get one unit and then you get a second unit coming in, you've got 24 bodies on the objective. You get a third unit up here, you've got 36 bodies on the objective. If there's anything that's going to outbody me on the objective, like clan rats um, or something like that, Furies actually have a pretty solid profile. Um, there are two attacks apiece, so 24 attacks in the unit of 12, fours to hit, threes to wound, minus one rend, one damage. Throw them and Bellacor into something, you know, you'll wipe out that unit of clan rats that's going to outbody you. Um, and so Furies just, they're your screens. They, um, they can go back and hold objectives. They can actually kill something if you need them to. And what I love to happen in my games, this happens all the time, is they're on an objective, they're taking a couple hits, they charge, they attack, they've, you know, killed three Furies. They're two wounds apiece. So they've killed yes. three Furies. Um, so I'm down to nine Furies on that unit. 
So I don't activate that unit now because it's already been attacked. So I, I go over here and activate this other unit and I come back to them. That's when I then cower away and still hold that objective. And then at the end of the battle shock phase, I get to roll a three up and bring back D3. And so these things just don't die. Like I've played games where these, I have all four units of Furies on the board in some way, shape or form at the end of that game. What I love to do is having like, um, there was a game I played against um, uh, Kragnos and Kragnos comes in and he hits, was it Craig? I think it was, uh, it might have been one of the monster trucks, the uh, um, Gatebreaker Frost, Lord, Frost Lord on Stoner, I think. Oh yeah. He comes in and he hits this unit of 12 Furies and left like maybe three, I think three left. So I go over here, activate something else, and then when it's time for activate them, I cower them. They go 12 inches. They go within range of Bellicor's 18-inch command range because he's a general. So that's a 20, that's a 30-inch spread for Bellicor to be able to do inspiring presence at the start of my combat phase. And then I do a D3, you know, a, a three up. I get D3 at the bottom of that battle shock phase. Next hero phase, I do a rally and I roll nine dice because they've lost nine models. So I bring back, you know, maybe one, two, if I'm lucky, usually zero because of how I roll. But you've got Rally, and they're in range of Bellacore to get the Rally because they don't have a leader, so you have to remember that. They're in range of Bellacore to get a Rally. And if it's my turn, I've got the Blue Scribes who's going to auto-cast an Emerald Life Swarm on a two-up. Hmm. That's going to come out when it casts. It's going to, you know, on, on, a, on a, a three or higher, it's going to bring back a model. End of the hero phase, three or higher, it brings back another model. So I've gone, I've had a unit of, you know, something down to a unit of three Furies and got them back to about seven or eight in from one battle shock to the end of a hero phase. And then they're off again. Burning question from the chat that I think is an important question because some people who either have heard about Legion of the First Prince or already playing Legion of the First Prince is wondering why this list doesn't have a corn demon prince and paperboy jay has been adding some really great commentary in the in the chat and i've been bringing it up as we go but for the folks who obviously can't see the visuals because you're talking a lot about denial right you're denying mm -hmm. people you're moving your furies around you're retreating them from combat instead of attacking to always be kind of threatening the objective mm -hmm. so surely surely the the corn demon prince would just add an extra layer to that that zone denial right like surely this would be a great piece mm, i don't think so <laughs> just be i mean so he, he's going to limit charges so what i love about furies is that they're not so a unit of 12 will take up a solid amount of board space and then again you have to think that everything is broadcasting a three inch no go zone around it unless they charge right so in your head you've got to think whatever that Whatever that blueprint for that unit is, add three inches to it, and this is a this is this is my space now until you charge me. Um, and it's, but with the Furies, like I can get them into a, a unit of long strikes relatively easily. Um, they're going to take the hit because they're twenty four wounds, and then they're actually going to do some damage to those long strikes. They're going to take out you know two or three in a combat, and then I'm going to roll a three up uh, a D three to bring back more for the next turn. Um, one that I was playing an IDK army. And I had Bellacor. <clears throat> this was another wonderful way to use these series. So um, Savage Spearhead. Um, I was, uh, Savage Spearhead was my tactic. And it was uh, it was one of the missions where there was an 11-inch deployment. And so uh, an 11-inch, actually, 11-inch territory, right? So I had to be wholly within their territory for Savage Spearhead. And so he had a unit of, um, uh, I think it was 20 Reavers that were sitting. It was, it was um, uh, Savage Gains. It was sitting on his objective. And so I had Bellacor, I brought him up next to the 20th outside of three, and then I had a unit of Furies, and I brought them in, and then I charged the Furies. The Furies took the Unleash Hell, and then I charged Bellacor. You know, I, I was able to charge Bellacor around to get him into, um, into Holy Within the Territory. The Furies, however, weren't Holy in the Territory after the charge. But the Furies took the Unleash Hell, Bellacor came in, stomped, the, just basically stomped the, the Thralls really hard. And then I activated the Furies, and they cowered out to be Holy Within for Savage Spirit. Mm. So they didn't do anything to that unit, right? But they ate the Unleash Hell, and they were able to cower out to still give me the battle tactic. And so to me, that's a win unit. If it was a unit of six, it would have been killed by the Unleash Hell. Um, but still having it alive because it's a unit of 12, 24 wounds. It's like some people talk about unit of six versus unit of 12. I'm always going to bring a unit 12 because I think you get, especially when you're bringing back D3, you want that unit to stay alive as long as possible. 
was just looking up a question in the chat. So Billy the Marine, and I think the answer is no here. I'm no. almost 90% yeah. sure. So Billy Billy is asking, can you take the Lord of Affliction and Blight Lords? Um, no, and I, I just, I just they're, because they're mortal. Uh, the key reason they, I think the error, the, the app might be wrong, but yep. when you look at the keywords, they're not demon, which is yep, what they lost it. you from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they used to be both. Like, uh, I think yes. the the corn, um, the the mortal corn um, cavalry used to be both, and they, they lost that too. Yeah, there's a couple of things that are kind of fringed on both of them. Yes, in the new book, they have cleaned wow. it up. And Billy, yeah. thank you for the sticker donation. Much appreciated for that. Uh, really do appreciate that one. But yeah, like I think, you know, like when you look at this list, and you know, I'll bring it back up for the, just in case anyone's joined the, the stream. You know, there's a lot of cool things coming in here, and the theory and the reason why we talk so much theory before we get to the list is because if I want to think about denial, but I don't want to play certain, or I can't get furies, or I want to try something mm. different. There are so many different options. Yes, the corn demon prince is one option, but the mask and the contorted epitome, and there's other yeah. things that allow you to play in that space. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you don't own plague bearers and you don't like Nurgle, well, you know, you try to find something else that plays in that space. But yeah. I guess what you've heard from Sean is it's less about combat. There is no bloodthirster. Mm. There is no keeper of secrets or Shalaxi. Um, Senessa and Dexessa, I think, are good, uh, interesting options for a Legion's army, especially mm. Senessa. I love Senessa. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the fact that she can look out, sir, is is really good. <laughs> and that she's, that she's not going to give you another drop just for her, whereas Dexessa, you have to do another drop. Um, and she has important. and she has board wide command ability, or is that Dexessa? No, she she does, and uh, and she can also cast um, yes. uh, 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 board wide. So, um, I mean, one thing I do want to mention though, since we're on, is that the the uh, cursed skies, the ability to bring back D three on a three up, um, that happens every battle shock phase, and it's not like a battle shock test. So, battle shock tests happen when you lose models that combat. Um, with this ability, I can have a unit of furies or unit of play bearers lose models round one, and still be rolling to get them back round four. It's just, is there, has there been any models taken out from that unit at all? If it's not at full strength, roll for it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's literally over and over and over again. There's literally no risk in doing it. Like, it's not like you roll a, you roll a bad roll, you lose a bunch of models. It's just, you know, you've, you've got so, you've got so much high bravery as well. Like a lot, a lot of your stuff being demons are a 10. So, yeah, so 10. you, you know, you need to take a lot of attrition to even remotely risk it, risk it. And what's what's uh, interesting is that when it was Legion of the Chaos Ascended, the the Legion of the First Prince had its own little little paid. It was a sub faction, and in order to do this D three return, you had to spend a command point, which is why I was like, I'm never going to run it. But now they lost the CP requirement when Bellacor came out, and it just happens for free if he's your general. So you are sacrificing Ruinous Aura um, or, uh, or or any of the other um, command traits, but you're getting it for free every battle shock. It's really really strong. What's the Soul Screen Bridge doing in your list? So the bridge is there for the unit of 20 pinks um, in order to just take them and put them where I need them to be. Um, because the battle line, if I'm doing um, power and numbers, I can get them up into one of their, um, uh, their objectives. Most of the objectives, like the majority of the objectives in uh, 3.0 so far, are three in the middle, um, either diagonally or straight. So... I want to be able to get those guys up there as soon as possible. And also I have it there because you can use it at 20 pinks. Once they'll start popping into blues, you've got 40 blues on 25 mils and it can get kind of unwieldy. And then they're going to become brims. But if you keep this in mind, because the bridge lets you pull things out in combat, um, because they're giving away at one victory point um, due to the uh, the hunt that just came out, um, you can use that soul screen bridge to pull them out when they're in danger and send them mm. across the board so that you don't give up that VP. And by then you have brought, you summoned in, you know, plague bears or something else that's clogging up the board. Um, and so uh, what I like about that is that off the scribes, because soul screen bridge is 18 inches, right? You put it out wholly within 18 inches of the caster. That, so scribes can be here, 18 inches is here, and then 18 inches is here, right? So you're really talking almost 36 inches. The, the real thing you need to worry about is that um, if the scribes are in the middle, 18 on one side, 18 on another side, um, if, if you have the scribes, uh, the, the issue you have to think about, though, is having all of the horrors, all the models in that unit, wholly within six of where you drop that 
one half of the soul screen bridge. So that's why as you're popping, if you want to have this ability to pull them out later, they have to be holding within six. So you kind of have to, you know, you can arrange them like this around an objective yeah, and you you, pop the bridge you, you, on you the need objective them, itself. You need like a moon or something because yeah. you've, you've got to think about because it's going to be it's a wholly within six inches of the, the first bridge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they can just fly across the board. Um, it's it's a the soul screen bridge is pretty insane for what it does. Yeah, and you've got some strong casters as well. Um, and like you know, again, like you know, there's so much flexibility in this list. You know, I know Paperboy Jay mentioning that it's a so strong list, and you're right. But you know, if you want to lean more into sloppy bar piper, good option mm -hmm. potentially when you've got the plate bearers in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be looking at things like beasts of Nurgle or even you know Nurglings if you want to add a Nurgle flavor. Mm -hmm. um, something you haven't got in here and you mentioned that a good option is things like flesh hounds yep. you know especially to help deny your opponent from casting mm -hmm. spells so again it's, that's that's what, that's what i love about this there's just so much flexibility mm -hmm. um if you don't want to go too heavy in one particular style and, and what i like about this list like so this is one that i played against um a you know, local obr player here adam who's just got a gorgeous list um the the, the picks i sent for you uh to you were, were of the uh his army but the the 20 pinks just take catacros for four turns um and they did no damage to him which is good because you know his main attack ends up going up in uh attacks and damage as he gets wounded and so it was just like okay just go into him um and i also like this list a lot because i mean even more so with the next one we're going to talk about but opponents look at this when you put it on the table what do they shoot at yeah i mean you don't want to waste time shooting at pinks you don't want to waste time shooting at furies you're going to try to shoot at Bellacor, but everyone knows that you're not going to kill him, especially when he's going to heal D3 from a heroic action and two times D3 from a um, uh, life swarm that's going to double tap off the scribes. You can kill the scribes, but if I'm deploying correctly, I've put them within line of sight blocking, or at least they have minus one to hit. Um, and so there's, it, it's really a conundrum. Like usually when you go to a, a table and you're like, okay, that's the thing that I need to worry about and I'm going to target it. With a list like this, people are kind of like, what am I, what do I do? <laughs> and and it's, it's that sort of hesitation that you then play in because then you, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to lock down one of your units for one or two turns. Don't forget. Um, and so for for most getting into their head. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and by the way, Sean keeps referring to photos. I have a couple of these photos that I'm going to share um, when, when we finish the lists and I talk about deployment. So I've got, I've got two examples of Sean's deployments that he can um, talk a little bit about how he kind of wraps it all up. But I do want to ask you like, for most people, when I look at a list like this, people would focus mostly on like Bellacor first. Good. Now, now that's that's I was going to say to you literally like once Bellacor throws down Dark Master, um, I mean he still, still has incredible value, but like you, what's mm -hmm. done is done, and there's a lot of flexibility in Dark Master to stop you from from doing certain things if you mm -hmm. really need to. Well, but what's, also, what is what is the linchpin? Like, what is the linchpin? What's the thing that you would want to not lose the most? Well, in this list, because Bellacor is the general, and I want to d three things back, um, he's he's central, um, and it also, also has prize sorcery. So this one could easily be broken ranks too. Um, uh, depending, if I have a block of twenty horrors, though, I'm playing him pretty aggressively. Like I'm wanting them to be hit um, and to bog something down, because like you said, coach, people just don't retreat. Um, and even when they do retreat, that's one of their movement phases, and they only have five of those. Um, yes. And they, most things can't charge after that. Um, and so uh, I don't care if you get in combat and retreat from me because I'm trying to, I'm trying to take away to slowly winnow away your windows of opportunity to do things while I'm doing things. Um, and so I guess Bellacor, I mean the blue scribes, I can lose them. Um, the, it's gonna, it's kind of a bummer that I don't get the the two up um, auto cast, uh, an undispellable cast. Um, and I also like to change them into a monster um, and then use them in Bellacore for Savage Spearhead. But you got to be careful with that because if they get killed, then they give a VP for being a monster. Correct. So, um, yes. so I, I mean, I picked Prize Sorcery for this because I actually want people to think, okay, Bellacore's got Dark Master. He's, gonna, he's the general, so he brings back D3. He also has Prize Sorcery, so I want to kill the wizards. And that way they're sort of trying to target him and trying to kill him. Um, and it's very difficult to kill. And when I've got, especially with the next list that I'm running with four units of 12, 12 Furies, I have so much on the board. You're just, if you're a melee army, you're not going to get to him. He's not going to, you're not going to be able to hit him until I say I need him in combat. And he can go 14 inches and then charge. So he'll get where I want him to be. Boom. List changed. So there's your second list. Oh, so you've got your seekers, got the flesh hounds. So you've got the same fundamental. 
quick question uh, that I think is a good one is mm -hmm. um, Jerome asking, you know, do you have any tips or advice on creating a cohesive force? Because I could see that as a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do I paint a, a cohesive force? And I think for me, the, the, the key thing is going to be basing, right? Um, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. It's mostly just basing. So I don't know how well you can see this or not, but the basing material is all the same. Um, well, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's, it's all sort of the same sort of basing that's connecting everything. Um, and yeah. so, and, and what I've done is I put different color tufts for the different factions. So if I want to take them into an all corn army, I've got the the black tufts of grass for corn with the blood. Um, if I want to do a Nurgle, I've got the the Nurgle with the brown and the, and the Nurgle's rot. Um, but but they're all connected enough, but distinct the faction the factionally distinct in the Legion's army that it all sort of ties in together. I think it looks fine. Um, and again, I'm not really a painter. I'm not doing the hobby meta. Um, I put enough paint on so that you let me play. That's about it. <laughs> No, that's cool. No, I like it. Uh, and yeah, you know, like it depends on like, do you, are you going to go all out on this faction, right? If you build a Legion of the First Prince and then decide I want to become a corn player, a slanish player, and you want to then take the faction to, um, to, you know, into those and build that out, mm -hmm. do you want the same scheme across all of them? Or can you find subtle little ways to create something unique? And I, I guess it's up to yeah. you on how you want to see the faction. But the yeah, second list has a lot, lot of commonality. Sorry, Sean. I, I would say coming to the LFP chat, people have some gorgeous looking um, uh, models. Just and they're pulling out all the stops. Um, Paperboy Jay's got a great looking army. Um, Jim over in Sweden is just he's and he's doing some awesome mods, modifications and stuff, some kit bashing things, and people are just kind of going nuts. And it's it's really awesome to see. So so come join us on the AOS Coach LFP chat. I swear I'm not, I'm not paying Sean to say this. I swear, like there's no and the, and the links down below if people want to join. Uh, it, it definitely a great way to cook up lists and get people to share Wait. their thoughts and their experience. And you know, have you tried this? Have you considered this? What did you learn? Wait a minute, you're not paying me for this. All right, we're gonna talk after. <laughs> Are you paying me now? Are you now are you paying me? Your second list. Bring them back over. So you've got commonality, right? You've got your mm -hmm. Bellacore, you've got your Blue Scribes, you've got two units of Pink Horrors, you've dropped, sorry, two units of Plague Bearers that you've dropped the Pink Horrors, mm -hmm. and in its place you've got two units of Seekers. Mm -hmm. Love the Seekers in this yeah. list. It definitely plays, um, uh, love it, love it, love it, love it. And then you've got three units of 12 Furies. Um, you've dropped four. Soul Screen Bridge. Oh, four, sorry, yes, I can't count. I'm, it's all right. It's lunchtime for me. I just want to eat. Oh, that's sort of delicious. <laughs> you got four units of, of, of 12 Furies, and then you've got Emerald Life Swarm. I'm thinking mm. about the fact that I need to say that you've dropped the Soul Screen Bridge. Yeah. So yeah. you're around, you're actually more wounds. You've gone from 150 odd wounds to 180 odd wounds. Yeah. Um, but you are at 2,000 on the nose. So you're not going to get your triumph. Yeah. Um, well, so with the other list, if you take into account the extra wounds in that unit of 20 pinks, it actually comes to 231. So that's yeah. So um, so they're yeah. kind of stealth wounds. There's like an extra eighty built in. Sure. So they sure. have to chew through two hundred thirty one wounds in order to table that other list, which is insanity. Um, but yeah, but it was just based on straight up what's on the War Scroll itself. This one does have um, more wounds at one hundred eighty five. I know Peter Bourget. I love this version. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, so really why is. why do you like it? Because like a lot of people will probably haven't touched Slanesh, and they and mm -hmm. people don't talk a lot about Slanesh. Um, yeah. So how does this differ and how does it all work? Does Bellacore and the Blue Scribe work the same way? Well, so that all works the same way. Bellacore's still the general. Um, I don't know. If, if this might be actually a good time, Coach, to look at the, the photos from that game again with a, against Kragnos, the, the, the deployment one, and then maybe the after my top of one where it shows the movement um, because that really sort of plays out what I was able to do. With was that the gray players. table or is that the red table? It's, Sorry, the, the gray the table? The the black and red table, the, the lava. This yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. So you've got, let me see what you've got here. So you've I, think got got, I think I've got deployment one one and two or yeah. two and three. Yeah. So do you have, are you able to put no, out no. Um, end of I don't, one? I don't, I, don't, I don't have the rest of them. It's just okay. this one particular image. Okay. That's fine. Um, well, you see the deployment here. So I've got the seekers up. Um, so we're playing a uh, uh, power struggle, I think it is, uh, with the, the three and three. Um, so you've got, Seekers on the line, Seekers on the line, and then uh, the units of uh, Furies behind the Seekers. 
And then the, you see the Plague Bearers there, the other Unit of Furies behind, Unit of um, Hounds in the back, um, and then the Blue Scribes and Bellacore. Um, so what I did with this, uh, so I, the first thing, I, first question I always ask my opponent every time I go up to the table is, and we, we, we roll to see, you know, who's going to go high and low and I, who, who takes the first drop and I say, how many drops are you? To me, that's the first question that should come out of your mouth when you walk up to a table and, and you roll for priority, uh, uh, for deployment. Um, and so I knew that I was going to go, um, I was going to get the option, right? He was three drops. I was two drops. And so what I ended up doing with this list, um, that you see deployment on, on the left side here, is I ended up, and you kind of, kind of see on the top right there, too, what ends up happening after, uh, after the round, is that I have the unit of five Seekers. So the Seekers are amazing because they are not battle line, so they are not going to give up um, broken ranks. And they have the same base profile as the Hounds. So you'll see on the deployment picture, those Hounds are taking up a massive amount of space. And they're also, you know, they've got that three-inch no-go bubble around them. Um, so they're, they're screening out from Deep Strike really well. And the Seekers are deployed the same way. So Seekers have a, um, when they run, you get to roll 2d6. It's mm -hmm. not keep the highest, it's just 2d6, which means that you can't auto run 6, but you're going to run roll on average at least a 6. Um, and so, and then they can also run and charge, and they can reroll their charge from the banner. So if you really need them to get somewhere, you can. But what I did with both those Seekers is I just ran them, and they both, you can see at the top right picture, they both went like between 20, 22 and 24 inches. I think one was 22, one was 24. And so they're right up there on their objective um, outside of three, just sitting there. I'm not charging with them. I'm just putting them there at the top of one. And then I auto run the, the Furies as well. Um, I auto ran one of the Furies. Um, oh, that's right. So what this list is not very good at killing something that's got a lot of wounds, right? It's something that's really got a heavy armor save. Um, it's good at, you know, you get Bellicor in, you can take broken ranks from a unit of, um, uh, from a smaller unit pretty easily. But what I end up doing with this is there's, there's, okay, so there's eight possible battle tactics that Legion can pull from. We don't have our own special ones like everybody else. Um, but five of those eight don't require you to kill anything, right? There, there's only, there's Slay the Warlord, there's Bring It Down, there's Broken Ranks. Those require you to kill something. The other five are just do this thing and be in this position and that's it. And so what I needed to do, what I need to do with this as a Legion player is I need to say, okay, what is the battle plan? What, what does this mission let me do? Um, and so for that first round, I picked Conquer because I knew I was going to be able to take one of those objectives. But what I should have done, and this happened with me against OBR on the Vice, the Vice of all things. Remember the, the long deployment? Yeah. I, on his two at round two in the Vice, because I had enough bodies. I had four units of Furies in that list. I had enough bodies just be like, Whoop, I'm around it, it's mine. I'm not gonna charge you, I own those. Um, and I could have done it with this too because I had enough that were up there. Um, but I, I didn't wanna gamble because I could only auto run one unit of Furies and I couldn't auto run the other. But so what you'll see from that pick is that after my turn, I've got a screen, you know, two, two screens of Seekers who aren't gonna give up broken ranks. I've got two screen, uh, two units of Furies behind him on the top right there that aren't going to give up broken ranks. When he charges into those Seekers, those Furies are now in combat because they're within three. They have an option to cower. And so they can then bounce out and go where I want them to do within 12. Kragnos was on the middle objective. Kragnos is the thing I'm most worried about in this list, not because he hits really hard, because what he's going to be hitting is Furies or he's going to be hitting Seekers. I don't really care. And I'm going to be summoning in other battle line units behind those things to really just bog the board. What I care about is he's worth 30 wounds on an objective. And mm -hmm. so I can't really outbody 30 wounds. That's really tough. So I ended up bellicoring, you know, using Dark Master on Kragnos um, and making sure that he could only shift over. Uh, he got one movement off and he shifted objectives a little bit. Um, but I was able, basically, I took control of the of, of the board. That was just a local game. Right? I was just kind of you know testing out the list some more. But I took control of five out of the six objectives for multiple rounds. And then when Kragnos was free of the Black Master, or of the Dark Master, he started shifting down, I guess, to the to my bottom right. And all I did was start turning like a clock. Like, because the second he got off an objective, I was able to get right on that objective. And so you need to make sure you keep something. And even if he's on an objective, what I love about Furies is that um, even if you're on an objective, because it's a six inch, you know, it's like a six inches all around, it's a 12 inch, it's a 12 inch radius, uh, six inch diameter, 12 inch radius. 
Um, because because it's such a big footprint, actually. When, when you measure it out with a circle, you see how big that footprint is. If you want to stop Furious from taking that, you have to have something here on that objective, something here on that objective, something here on that objective, right? You really have to zone out the objective or I'm going to get that unit of 12 on there somehow, and I'm going to take it from you. And I'm not going to get in combat, so you're not going to be able to kill that unit. And, but it's, it's an entirely different way to play the game. Like, it's just, it's it takes it takes thinking about and getting into, that's why I've, I didn't just go to this list when I started playing Legion of the First Prince and Bellicle came out. I kind of slowly, though, the 3BT list with the, the piling in six and all that um, kind of shifted me to this. And over time, um, this is what, I, what I've arrived at. And it's it's super strong. And and it's counterintuitive. I keep saying this word. It's counterintuitive because when you get close to an opponent, you want to charge. Mm -hmm. When someone is in combat, you want to fight. You don't want to retreat what you're really doing is you're pulling back from those you know instincts to go right well if if someone's coming for me especially Kragnos, especially mm. mega gargans where you don't often have the bodies to outmatch them you can retreat or you can kind of zone out and i've mm. said this to a few people in the past the best way to beat mega gargans is to not let them on the objective in the first place because yep. you're not going to have the body. So if you can screen the objective, the fact that you then have the ability to then try to dance out of combat. So especially when they buff up, you know, uh, their finest hour, all that attack, mm -hmm. they do some certain command ability. You can pull back those resources by getting out of combat, retreating, getting, you know, all that good stuff. Right. So, exactly. um, and even zoning as well, like, you know, they want to go kill Bellacore. Well, cool. You've zoned up the board. You're clogged up that they've got mm -hmm. to kill the chaff, the flesh hounds, the seekers, the furies, the whatever. Yep. Yep. And, and the fact that furies as well are not um, battle line um, means that you don't give up broken ranks. So again, you yep. keep denying your opponent those juicy objective mm -hmm. uh, victory points. Yeah, and, and uh, that picture, what it showed too, is that I've got seekers, I've got four units of furies, my battle line's back here, right? You have got to get through all of that to get to the battle line. And I can always cower Furies out to have them scream. Um, and, and and because they're two wounds apiece, it's 24 wounds, they'll take a hit and then survive. And then I'll do, you know, Inspiring Presence and all the, the, the bring back models. Um, and so they'll, they'll just come right back out and do their thing again. Um, it's it's very counterintuitive for some people. And, and so, again, when I'm listening to reviews of, you know, War Scrolls and the amount of attacks and the rend and the damage, and I'm like, what's the movement? All right, <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's all I really care. And, and if they kill Seekers, like my Seekers are there to die, right? The Seekers are there to, 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 to lock you up for a turn because it took one whole turn just to get through Seekers. That's one out of five turns. That's one-fifth of the game just to kill two units of Seekers. And then you've got to kill Furies that are behind them, right? And then that's another turn. And all the belt was Dark Mastered for two turns in a row because I gave it away. Um, and so we were on turn three to four. I had a uh, bottom of four and uh, sorry, bottom of three. And I won priority and I looked at the board and I said, you know what? This is actually exactly how I want it. You go. I'm gonna, I gave him the turn because the board state was perfect for me. I wanted to use my turn to react to how he changed the board state. Um, and so it, it's, it's just a very reactive army. And it's, it's one where, like I said, my turns can just be boom, outside of three, outside of three, outside of three, outside of three. I'm done. Any advice for anyone who wants to get furious? Because I'm seeing in the chat, you know, and, and something that I've even seen people, uh, a big barrier to entry is getting this many furies in, mm -hmm. in you know, uh, on, a, on a list right how do you go out and buy them and 3d printing is certainly one i appreciate that some people play at games workshop they want to play it like the warhammer open yeah. so that might not be an option for you obviously you can get people to to 3d print if you don't own a resin mm -hmm. printer yeah. outside of that do you have any other advice for getting furies especially this many i think it's the quantity mm -hmm. that would be a massive barrier to somebody yeah. Yeah, I think when I, when I sent you the, the first 48 Furies list, Coach, your reaction was, why do you have so many? And I said, because I wanted to play this list. <laughs> I also may have said you're insane. <laughs> yep, I think that was probably said. And I'll own that. I'm cool with it. Um, well, uh, fortunately, they were in the Warcry starter. I mean, it came out a little while ago. Um, but in my local area, there was a lot of folks that had bought, that had purchased the Warcry starter. So I was able to get just the, the Fury side. Um there are, you know, they're they're in the Warcry Chaotic Beast box, so that's going to give you, if you, know, if you just buy those, it's going to give you a bunch of Raptrixes, which aren't as good. Um, but uh, 
you know, some folks I see in the LFP chat have talked about taking the Raptorixes and the Furies and swapping enough body parts and kit bashing so you can get 12 out of it. You know, it's where you're using all GW stuff and there's enough of each within each of them in order to allow you to get 12 out of the box. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it is tricky. It's tricky to, to, to get this this number. Um, I've, you know, taken a look at various websites and just kind of watch the price, you know, see where they, uh, sometimes you'll get them really cheap. Um, but hopefully GW will, will release them as a standalone. Um, one thing that I, I do want to point out is the base size um, of them. So, and this has been something that's kind of been discussed um, <clears throat> late, uh, quite a bit in the LP chat, and we've we've all you know talked this through, and um, and I've talked to TOs about it, um, and, and this is what I've gotten from TOs. Um, so they come in the Warcry box; they come with 32 mil bases, but the base size FAQ has them on 25 mils. So they, this remodel, this new model, this new sculpt, um, came out with the Wars Cry box, um, uh, the first starter, and it came out in, um, I think it was 2019. 19, I think it was. The base FAQ had, was revised in January of 2021. So based on that, you, so they've said it's 25 mil after they put out 32s, then they said, no, it's supposed to be 25. Um, there's other things like this, like Festus the Leech Lord, I think is supposed to be on a 40 and he comes with a 32. Mork's Mushroom is supposed to be on, you know, they changed it after it was already released. Um, uh, I know that Nathan was, was complaining of War, uh, Honest War Gamer about having to rebase his. Um, and so and, but people said, what about Bellacore, right? Bellacore in the base FAQ is on the smaller base, but he got a new sculpt since the last yes. update. Yes. So yep. because he got a new sculpt since the last update, he would be on that new sculpt's base. The Furies, their sculpt happened before the last update, which has them on 25. So every TO I've talked to has said 25s. Um, and so I've been putting mine on 25s. And if they do go to 32s, that's going to be easy to do because you know, just pop the 25 on a 32, you're good to go. Um, but uh, but as of now, every, every TO that I've talked to has said, you know, the base size FAQ is, is what we're going to go with. Yeah. And it's yeah, actually better. It... It's actually better because you've got 12 25 mil models. So you can actually do base to base stringing. Yes. Um, and still be coherent. Yeah, it's a, lo a lot easier for coherency and um, just movement in general. Yeah, as a TO, my natural is to look at what the FAQ says and what the current basing size is, mm -hmm. unless there's a strong argument otherwise. So, yeah, I, I'm happy to go 25s. And, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of good options could be Canary. Um, I actually oh, converted yeah, some... I, I converted some flying squigs recently. The Canary wings lead. are the exact same wings. Well, well, that's that's what I did was I was able to find someone who was selling bits, and I actually just only bought the wings. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the Dark Eldar, they've got like some flying Drukari type yeah. things, and they come with like twelve wings for six models. So there's actually really? robotic. I think they've got like six um, like feathered wings and six like robotic. There's a whole bunch of like wings, right? But mm -hmm. again, you can get uh, there's a whole bunch of kit bashing and. It's very easy to do if you can get like mm -hmm. canary wings. So if you're yeah. someone who wants to create a thematic type of fury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I would always go, as I mentioned, I'd go with units of 12 instead of six because 12 can take a hit and you've got enough there to bring back. Um, and, and the list is like, like I mentioned, it's just, it's very much not the typical I'm going to go in and kill because kill points don't matter anymore. When you play a tournament, um, it's, it's all about, you know, the, you break down objectives. Who completed all their objectives, and then you just certain ties on that. Um, the amount of enemy units you've killed does not factor in any way, shape, or form into uh, the, the, who wins the game. And so, kill points. Kill points are not measured. They're not even a tiebreaker. It is. Yeah. It's uh, win or loss. Uh, how many v? Uh, how many grand uh, battle tactics did you mm -hmm. score out of your five? Did you score your grand strategy? Some people count like how many monsters you kill, mm -hmm. but like, you know, then it's like straight the schedule, like literally kill points is not even recorded. So yeah, exactly. um, this plays to your strength. Yeah. And being able to win a game without killing a single enemy unit just feels so good. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll bring up your other picture as well. I think I'd be remiss because you clearly went to the effort of, of sharing me a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your deployment here. Um, so, um, yeah, so the deployment's on the left, um, and the after top one move is on the right. So um, you can see this. This, this is the uh, the twenty horror list um, that we looked at first. And so Soul Screen Bridge um, brought them up, um, and you. Uh, so they're up at the middle of the objectives right now. 
And this is the one that we played the, the mission from the core rules where it has the three in the middle, but it has one on each end. Um, it's, I forget what the name is called now. I think it begins with an it's R. The first blood? No, it's not um, the first blood. No, it's, it's, from the, it's from the core book. Um, man, what is it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but it's basically three in the middle, but it's got one at the, at each, in each deployment or, uh, at the end. Um, and so this, I just brought the pinks up and I used this old screen bridge as, um, uh, because I know, you know, he's he's not. He, you have to do the soul screen bridge movement at the start of your movement phase, so he's not going to be able to use it to his advantage because um, he's going to have to move to it before he can even use it. So I use it as sort of a, a blocker to stop um, Catacross from coming in, um, and got Bellacor up there. You know, the Furies are blocking on the far left. Furies are blocking on the far right. This is only three units of twelve, and then you've got the one in the middle. Um, I ended up using Bellacor's Dark Master on this. Later in the game, when he uh, he tried to kill the blue scribes for because you know OBR has a way to get battle tactics from White Dwarf that I don't have access to, which is kind of upsetting. Um, I'm not miffed at all, GW. Um, but he was trying to kill uh, the blue scribes. I think it was the something the tithe demands. I think is the name of it. Um, it's kill an enemy hero on the battlefield. And so uh, I, you know, the unit he was trying to kill the scribes with that was in combat. I went ahead and did Dark Master and denied him. Um, the battle tactic. So that's a good example of Dark Master directly denying a battle tactic, um, which I, I'll do it sometimes to stop a ferocious advance. But if it doesn't go off, I kind of feel like I've wasted a, a, a Dark Master. So I tend to use it for later. Rising Power. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so so here you can see, just like the other one, I mean, it, it's not as fast as the other one. Um, but top of one, I've just taken over. My whole army's just shifted up. Just everything's up there. Um, that other one that we saw, like, what I want to go across the board, it's gone 22, 24 inches, right? I have one, two, I have four units. Yeah, I've got four units that have gone 22 inches, um, and I've just got him locked in his deployment. Um, and then I've got all the bodies behind that are up at the middle of the board. And so one of the ways that this army, I think, controls uh, is not only through Dark Master, but also through just board presence. And you're summoning in, you know, Plague Bearers, maybe a unit of pinks, depending on, on what you need um, and what you're looking at. But every time you put a unit of, say, Plague Bearers, 20 wounds on the table, you're saying, again, three-inch bubble around that unit, um, and it's something they're going to have to chew through. Uh, and so this, this army controls the board in so many different ways other than just Kairos, the Demon Prince. Um, and so I'm glad that people are starting to s explore those other areas. Are there any other units that play well to the control style that you haven't already spoken about? Like yeah. we've already sp spoken about Seekers, we've spoken about Furies, we've spoken about Plague Bearers and Pink Horrors and a couple of heroes. Anyone else, like maybe outside of the native, like, you know, we, there's already, we already know Kairos, we already mm -hmm. know the Corn Demon Prince, you know, yeah. anything that you're maybe cooking in the kitchen and maybe quite not ready to take out the oven or... Oh, I can't give away my secrets. Um, but how... Uh, uh, I will, I will mention, I mean, I've played with her before. Um, uh, the mask is a really great control piece. Um, and she's she's tricky, though, because if you're going um, other than keep something in combat and then probably get stopped, right? She, she's five wounds. She, um, she's she got an excellent move, right? She can run and charge. Um, and uh, she can also activate within six and pile in an additional three. And she flies when she piles in. Um, and she... Uh, um, She's got a four up ward on her scroll. Um, she will also reroll hits if the unit has, I think, I think it's ten or less uh, movement of ten or less, and then reroll wounds at movement of five or less. Is there some sort of breakdown like Sorry. that based on the enemy's Pe movement? People can look um, at the war scroll. <laughs> uh, but uh, this, this, is, this is the things I think about all the time. Right? Um, and so, uh, so she's she's she can do some damage. She can do some work, but she's really good at pinning a unit down. Um, she can take out a unit of ten, you know, little battle line. Um, and, uh, but she can also lock something in. And so for instance, like, cause she can fly when she piles in, she can pile in over. And then when they pile in, they have, they pile in towards her. Right. So, um, so you can make, you can kind of make them pull away from the objective. Um, if you want to, uh, what I like to do a lot coach, and you mentioned retreating that people don't retreat a lot. I will very frequently when I go to pile in, not move. Um, and I will just, so I'm in combat, right? And I will, uh, so um, I've got one, one little model within combat and I'll say, okay, I'm going to pile in um, and I won't pile in. I'll attack with that one because when I'm piling in then they're getting more models in, right? Especially if I'm stringing in a unit of Furies and I've got, I've got one thing, Fury hitting that unit. 
when they when I pile in, they swing get to swing with more. Or mm. if um, if I'm not within range, right? I just won't pile in at all and not get a hit. I'm still within within three, and I don't have to. I don't if if I pile in, I have to attack. And there's times where I might not want to kill a unit, so I just won't pile in. So I mean, a lot of people think that you have like piling becomes something that you have to do. Like I always pile in, I always attack, and piling in is an optional move. Attacking with all your melee weapons you're armed with is not an optional thing. Like you have to do that, but you can choose not to pile. And I, I started to really play around more with that piling in as an extra movement phase with uh, with the mask and with the three bloodthirster units with the the fury, uh, the unfettered fury, which gives the six inch pile in for uh, for corn demons until within sixteen. And you really start seeing how that's its own movement phase, and it, it allows you to do things or deny certain things if you don't do it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of not so much about killing other units. And so I've gotten more of the idea that you don't always have to pile in, which is, which is a hundred percent what you're focused on, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, people always pile in because they want to do max damage, but if that's not important and you know, again, like, why would I not charge my seekers into combat and still like lock you up? Well, the answer mm -hmm. is, is that you're going to come in, you're going to advance a little bit and give you an extra up to three inches. Mm -hmm. You're going to clear one of those units. So, yes, 100% agree with you. Uh, massive love to Bill the Marine. Thanks for joining up as a member. Greatly appreciated. Um, a couple of other things that I think is really worth calling out. You know, Jer Jerome had said the mm -hmm. contorted epitome. I good. really like the contorted epitome. Um, another, another one that came up, I can't remember where it was, um the changeling yeah I adam mentioned the changeling. The changeling. yeah it's adam like the changeling is a great little piece um, so so that game that he's talking about was the one where he was the obr player where i won without killing an enemy unit um and so the changeling was in that list it was a four uh, 48 fury list with the changeling in it and uh um i ended up playing it for that that event that day and it really didn't do what I wanted it to do, um, especially and now, especially because pinks are um, a prime target, you're going to summon a unit of five pinks off of him, and that's going to possibly give up a victory point. Um, he's going to be within nine in order to be able to give minus one to hit minus one to um, or ha half movement. But invariably, whatever you're giving that to is just going to move to him anyway. <laughs> it's going to half move is fine, then it's going to charge, and it's just going to kill him. Um, so he can keep something down for maybe a turn. He's no longer the summoning platform he used to be. Um, and in that game against OBR with Adam, um, because I dropped him back in his deployment, he ended up getting that stupid, the tithe demands and getting a two victory points uh, for his battle tactic. So I ended up shifting. I was like, you know, let me see what else I can do. Um, and I ended up going with just the, the two heroes um, that had the incredible movement, the incredible speed. Um, in fact, when next time I play the Vice, um, because with Bellacore, that, that list of 48 Furies that you showed, I'll have Bellacore and I'll have the Blue Scribes in the back within six to cap those at deployment, and then they can just move up because the Plague Bearers go so slow. I can have them. So whenever I think of the Vice, I always have to think of where's everything in turn two, where's everything in turn four. So I can have Plague Bearers up here where the the objectives are going to shift on on two, and have Bellacore and the Blue Scribes cap it at the start of the game, and then they've got fourteen and sixteen inch movement. They can come up in the middle of plague bearers sort of piddling around the back moving four inches um so it's that sort of thing that and then of course i've got to think what are my battle tactics what am i going to do each round um and, and am i going to be able to kill something in order to get to, to get one of the three or do i have to rely on the five so there's a lot of thought that goes into this but it's really really rewarding and so much so even more so with that first in that first list that 48 furies list with two units of 10 plague bearers um the 48 furies the two units of seekers bellacore and the blue scribes like enemies, like enemies, the player, a players come up. They're like, "What am I going to attack? Like, what do I target?" They don't, they don't want to waste an attack on any of those things, right? Those things are just not interesting. They're not attractive, and yet I'm forcing them to waste their attack phase um, or their movement phase and their charge phase to get into those things they don't want to get into. A couple of other ones I'd call out. I mentioned earlier the sloppy bar piper. I think is a good option. Another one that we, I haven't spoken about at all that I think is a very good option is a base of Nurglings. Yeah, Nurglings are interesting. They are going to get the six up, um, the, the Legion's Wide War, which is nice. Um, are they 
they're not limited to deployment or to, to enemy territory, are they? It's just uh, so. So, and the re this is exactly the reason why I, I like them because instead of deploying them on the table, you can deploy them in yeah. reserve. They're off board. And the way you bring them on is so long that it is outside of your territory. So it has to be, I think, at least three inches um, outside. It has to be outside your territory. Within three, uh, within, within three inches of a terrain feature and outside of nine. Yeah. So, um, and, and what I love about them as well is um, uh, in the battle shock phase, they heal all wounds allocated to them. So if someone doesn't kill the, the whole base, mm -hmm. it just fully heals up. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, I think that's a, a good possibility. My only, my only, because I've looked at them, and I think the only reason that I didn't go with them is because I'm running Bellacore as the general, and so they're not going to do any returns um, on no. three up. Um, and they're 105 points compared to six Furies at 95 points. Um, and so when I look at what I can do with the six Furies, how they're so mobile, because um, everything in my list moves, except for play bears, moves. Like uh, uh, mm -hmm. hounds are eight inches. Um, and in fact, with that list, I think I had price sorcery. I could go broken ranks and just keep the hounds in the back and have them move out of out of danger. Um, but everything move, does move really quickly. Um, and so once they're down, they're down. They're a good roadblock. But I think for me and the way that I'm playing with Bellacore as a general, um, I think that Furies play the the role of roadblock much better um, because of the the return and because of the cower, so that they can move out. Um, I can see them having having some play, especially if you can get. Um, something else up there to, to back them up, or maybe a unit of six. Yes. But if I'm bringing a unit of six Nurglings, I'd rather have a unit of twelve Furies. So yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not Furies versus Nurglings. Like I'm I'm not debating that at all. I'm giving some yeah. options, especially no, people yeah. are thinking other. Uh, the, yeah, the other one as well. Them. If you got them, yeah. Yeah. And another another thing that Mike, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on this one, and I want to get to Jerome's question in a sec. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> playing the other side of the fence here. Um what about what about screamers? Screamers are fast. Screamers, screamers are fast. Um, they're pretty cheap too. Like they're cheap because no one uh, uses them. Yeah, they're a hundred points, I believe, for three. Yeah, three um, of them. Yeah, so you're you're <laughs> I think the issue for me is that I am because I have Furies already, and because I'm running Bellacore as the general, everything in that slot, so that fast attack slot, if you will, if we're talking 40k, is getting compared to Furies, and they're just they're not gonna they're not gonna pass that test. Um, if you're not running Bellacore as the general, and if you don't have Furies, I think Screamers and Nurglings are excellent options. If you're running a five up. Runasaura, and you've got you know your heroes that you want to protect, and you want to throw these things out there to clog up the board and make them deal with it. I think that's a perfectly viable strategy. Um, uh, you're just not going to get the bounce back with D3, but then again, you're going to lose the Runasaura. So you can come at this in multiple ways, um, and that sounds like I mean I've got I think I've got like 22 screamers on the shelf yeah. uh, that I actually took time to paint because I was running uh, I was running screamer spam in Zeech. So that gives you an idea of where my primarian goes. Um, but they're great because like when you're playing LRL, just run over something, run over every single wizard unit in LRL and mm. dive bomb D3 mortals. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so I wouldn't, I would not, um, you know, tell anyone that they suck. They're not, they're, they're not the way to play. It's all, it's all about, like Legion of the First Prince has multiple pieces that you you get to you get to select, and so as you're going, you, you bring in your pieces together, and then you could say, okay, screamers fit really well into this overarching. I want a five up board um, bubble. I'm going to do more hero focused. I need something to block, um, but screamers and nerflings might not fit the best. Again, there's also perfect worlds where you have all these models. Um, I have a chaos problem. I will admit I have a chaos problem. So, um, so I, I have these models and I have the luxury to say, you know, I'm going to go this way. Um, but I think that you could make a really viable list with screamers getting up in someone's face. I think they go 16 inches. Um, so they're, they're, yeah, pretty, they're quite fast. Pretty fast yeah. Quite, yeah. So look, I think, I think the point here is that this, this works in your style. There are other styles. There are a lot of options. Do you have to go out and buy one particular list? No, tweak it, take it, work with it as you will. Um, it's been it's been kind of great great getting into your head just to kind of see how you build because it is if I just start a Legion of the First Prince army there's just so many options and I think for me how I look at it is breaking it down into like little trios or at least mm -hmm. little power pairs to go right well if I'm going to run a bunch of plague bearers I might want Sloppity Bile Piper yep. if I'm going to have if I'm going to have X unit I'm going to have Y unit to support them and start thinking about it this way 
it could be an easy introduction into legions and mm. then you build around it and make the most of it you know yeah. power pairs super easy mm. yeah like i mean if you dig up sloppity you know you know 20 play bear sloppity by a piper get a 14 wound monster and give it through an asora and have all of that get a five aboard i mean that's that's they're not going to move that any advice going against legion of the first prince imagine all these people listening to this wondering um how do I, on earth do i beat all these crazy shenanigans any I've advice come on I've, give us I've a taken hand. a solemn oath and i cannot um go against my brothers i'm sorry <laughs> um only the probably the best thing that i can give because it's it's a tough army dude it's, it's a tough army to play against especially i mean the if you're going against the 3bt list they can they can bring four, you know, 14 wound monsters to bear against a single target with, you know, a, a two uh, minus two rend on all their attacks. I mean, it's 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 tough on that. Um, but the one that I have, it's just I'm the board is just dominated, and so I guess. But I but the one thing that I would argue is always be aware of where your Legion of the First Prince player can summon from, um, and and sort of zone out accordingly um adam's right by the way um <laughs> pray pray and hope for the best pray yeah. that you fail dark master yeah uh, exactly so um but but so whenever you're looking at a legion of the first prince army the ability to summon is super powerful but it can only happen off heroes so a lot of folks I mean, i've said this before but a lot of folks are good at screening um whenever they set up for deployment but they don't think about screening throughout the game, right? And so, and, and screening is just moving to an area and taking control of it. And when you know that the summon can only happen outside of nine, if you block off where that player can bring those units in, then you're forcing them to bring the unit in somewhere if they get the role that they didn't want to bring it in um, or to not bring it in at all. And so you're you're going to negate that allegiance ability which is super powerful which is which could be 20 to 25 wounds that you no, no longer have to deal with um but as i mentioned a lot of folks want to you know they, they like to charge and get in and do combat um which is fine and you're also going to be able to lock out the the the, um, the pile in that or the the summon that way but also that lets me know where you are and you're locked in i mean I've, i mentioned this before one of the reasons why i don't care for the demon prince is that if that opponent is not charging then they're a free roamer for their next turn, right? When you're charged, you're locked in combat and it takes a movement phase to retreat out and then you can't charge again and you can't shoot. So I like it when the opponent is in combat because I know where they're at and I know they're going to have to take a, a, a whole turn in order to get out of that spot. And then I can maneuver around where they're locked in. If the Demon Prince has stopped them from charging in, then they're free to move wherever they want to next turn. And to mm -hmm. me, that gives them more possibilities and I don't like possibilities. Um, I really like to play, I mean, and, and so, and this is you know, kind of tangenting off the question, but I mean, this, this will kind of help think about when you're facing Legion of the First Prince person is there's a lot of things in this army, like the, 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 the cower from the Furies, that's a 12 inch move. I'm not rolling for it, right? If you end up going with the pylon from the, um, the Fury uh, Bloodthirster, that's at activate within six, right? And, and pile up pylon within six. And so instead of, um, instead of moving uh, 10 inches, the bloodthirsters move 10 inches and then rolling a charge that can give you a possible 12. So maybe 22, more than likely not. You can auto run six for 16 and then guarantee that 22 inch. So what I try to do is to minimize randomness and find a way to get rid of the roll as much as possible um, or get rid of any sort of, of, um, of, of, um, um, uh, and, um, yeah, any sort of chance within this this process. Twelve, um, and so whenever you're playing Legion of the First Prince, like knowing what their units can do and where they're able to minimize their chance, um, I think it's really going to be important. Memorizing their um, uh, allegiance abilities, like having that down, um, knowing what the Ruinous Aura is, knowing who has that Ruinous Aura, um, keeping a you know keeping an idea of wholly within 12 outside of nine for summons, right? So, and, and playing the objectives. One, probably the greatest compliment I've gotten from people that have played with these Furies lists is that it has forced them to play objectives. Like they have come to this game saying, what can I kill? Like, and, and they've had to totally revise their, their play in response to my play because I'm not playing that Warhammer where I'm going to go in and try to kill your unit. It's, had, it's forced them to have to come to the game and say, okay, how am I playing objectives? 
And so I would say when you're playing Legion of the First Prince, play objectives because that's how you're going to win. Play objectives, play battle tactics. Um, it's, it's, in some ways, I'm, I'm trying to not play the game that people are playing. So it's it, playing Legion of the First Prince's game as much as you can is <laughs> it, it, going to be a good thing. Um, and, and getting that body, like you said with the Gargans, getting those 30 objectives and then just retreating out, but keeping a toe into that objective. Right. I mean, that, yeah. that's really a good way to approach it, I think. And I mean, Sean's talked a lot about theories as well, right? He's talked about the benefits. He's, you know, like you're thinking about is right. Well, you know, I don't want to play, play the hand, you know? So I think thinking about ways to remove the furies without getting into combat or thinking about, mm -hmm. um, thinking about the objective and not allowing them to be able to retreat or, you know, move in the combat phase into a spot that they want to, mm -hmm. when you're forcing them out. So again, yeah. making them the tough decisions as opposed to the decisions that you think are the easy ones that you want to do. So mm -hmm. And, and one great example, one, one great example of that is um, I have a whole bunch of three, six, and nine inch tokens, um, and you know, like little sticks, right? And every time I'm playing the game, especially against a summoning army, really helpful against you know Soul Blight, um, Legion of the First Prince. Mm -hmm. You put down these different nine inch markers, so I'm like, right, okay, where could he summon from? What mm -hmm. would I be denying? Where could he come from? So that I'm always really present on the board and i think exactly. that's where bloodless bloodlust can often take you off that focus mm -hmm. and you then open up that small space to retreat into to cap the mm -hmm. objective yeah and, and, and as you're mentioning coach that when those furies do cower they're going to go 12 inches but they still have to be outside of three right because it's a retreat and so um so you can in some ways as the opponent you can shape where i get to put those um and you can say okay you can't go to this objective so so i guess the the so in response to Jerome's question, I would say, you know, think about summoning, think about your bubbles, think about your territory, where you're going to allow them to go. But also, don't play lists with five, six, eight models. I mean, especially against my list, when I see someone come on the board with five, with five to eight models, I get really happy because I'm like, you're, how are you going to hold an objective against that list? You're just, you're not, right? And, and so that's why I think that we're, we're going to be, there's going to be a response to these extremely low model count armies which is going to be bodies on the board, bodies on objectives. And Furious just lets you do that really well because they have these 15 touch points for movement. Um, but there's other things out there that can do it. And, uh, and so I think you're going to see a, a, a shift to that. And just to give you an idea, Coach, about the, the kind of stuff that I think about, because I know that we're probably, I mean, you've got to eat. We already know you have to eat. Um, but I'm wasting away. Yeah, and you got to put, <laughs> you got to get some fuel for those guns. Um, but the, uh, um, so like Savage Gains, for instance, I'm thinking through Savage Gains because Savage Gains shows up in a lot of turn packs, right? One, one, two in the middle, two points for each of those, one for yours, four for your opponents. And I'm thinking, okay, dragons list, right? You see that uh, current list we've seen, you know, unit of four dragons, unit of two dragons. Um, was another unit, of, second unit of four dragons, I think it Usually is. Usually it's two, the, two plus a, like a... Um, Nitroconus. Um, yeah, the Nitroconus. Yeah. So they're going to bring... Um, a unit of four down. Okay, so um, I was actually talking through this with Jim a little while ago when he was going to have to face one of these lists. So if they take top of one, which they probably will because they're going to have you know one drop, so they're going to come all the way down. So how do I deal with this? Well, for me, I would have my two units of, um, of uh, Seekers lined up to protect, and then I would have units of Furies behind them within three. Right? And so they come down, they you know, do their deal, they charge into my Seekers, they kill my Seekers. Uh, oh, and then I would have Plague Bearers lined up behind all 20 bodies on that objective. So I've got Unit of Furies, Unit of, uh, unit of Furies, and then underneath them another Unit of Furies, all so that they're within three when they charge. So they've wiped out the Seekers. I've got 20 Plague Bearers on there. They're not taking it from me because they're only five models apiece. And every single bounce. Most of these dragon lists don't have enough bodies. So I am now going to shift 24 and 24 Furies up onto those middle objectives. You can actually react and, and give them only one victory point off objectives, top of one, because they score theirs. They haven't taken yours, and you can possibly take the ones on the side from them because they haven't put enough bodies on there because the Furies have moved. So they've taken top of one. They've only scored one victory point with their dragon list. And now you've got a possible double turn and you still have Dark Master in reserve. 
Or if you end up going top of one on Savage Gains, you could line up your two, your five, two units of five Seekers um, so they're pointed up. And then you can just run them up to their main because because they have to be that uh that objective is on the line of their deployment, and you've got whole you've got you know within six, so even if they have something right there, you only have to be you have to be outside of three, but there's still another three inches that count for that objective. You could line up all ten of those seekers, and you could also auto run a unit of furies. You could take their objective top of one, outbody them, and score four points. So these yeah, the, are the the kind of things you can do with this sort of movement. And the other part to the benefit of what you're talking about, other than the movement, uh, is the fact that wound density, and I think that's probably the key to this, is, is it's wound density, whether it's going to be armies that heal really quickly. Again, that's why we've seen things like zombies become popular in Soul by Grape Lords. There's a Nurgle night, stuff. Nighthaunt list recently that did really well with the, um, the, the bounce back. Yeah. Absolutely, and why Nagash has become popular in, in Nighthorn mm -hmm. because it's a really super durable hero that can start bringing bodies, bodies, bodies. You've got that resiliency, right, the ward resiliency from Nurgle and from Nighthorn, or you're playing just pure bodies like Skaven and Gits. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how many mortal wounds you put out through the dragon breaths, it's not nearly enough. And you yeah. play in that space really well through the Plague Bearers, through the Pink Horrors. Mm -hmm. And things like you got a lot of and you're bringing back a lot of body so you've got wound density as well so yeah. again one of the reasons why you're well positioned in the meta but i think mm -hmm. ultimately if i start to kind of wrap things up you know there's definitely a lot of great play style and your list is one as many the the current list that's most popular again we talked about it bellacore mm -hmm. the bloodthirster the scar it's corn demon prince you know well kairos it still works really well yeah. but You've got the great unclean one. I think there's some play mm -hmm. there with the great unclean one. You've got lists like yours, which is very much about movement and things like that. There is so many cool ways you can build this, whether it's competitive or it's using your existing force. And that's what I love mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Yeah. The Legion's got just so much play. And you know, I, I was using the four, the, the four units of 12 Furies before the hunt came out. And now the hunt just kind of reinforce that this is the route that I'm going to go. Um, I am kind of a little nervous though, coach, because now everyone knows my thinking and my thought process. So. <laughs> like, Oh, I'm playing Sean at this tournament. Let me watch. Look, look up, look, I'm only a small YouTube channel. So people probably haven't even seen this video. So don't worry that's about true. it. Like if I was yeah. like, if I was on Warhammer weekly, that's when I would be really concerned yeah. that someone knows my tactics. Yeah. Sure. Most people see the beard and they get scared away anyway. So. Well, if only I didn't share my, the, those photos of your deployment. Now people know what's up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, think I would just say, I guess, in closing, because um, I know that you've, you've got stuff to do and so do I, um, but this has been a great discussion. And I really hope that it has sort of fostered uh, curiosity in folks about what this allegiance can do, because um, I'm a big proponent of taking something and putting it on the table and figuring it out and just, just testing it over and over. Um, and I hope that as the, the allegiance has been out for a little while, and people have started to, you know, they might have started with that net list, but they're you know, grabbing a couple pieces here, a couple pieces here then we're going to see more folks um, trying a bunch of new fun stuff. I think people's biggest concern is that because it's within Broken Realms Bellacor, and again, mm. this is where the primary book is, is that any minute now this book will become redundant. Mm. And I can fully appreciate if I'm somebody who's like, right, I'm a Zinch player, I'm a Slanish player, why would I buy X, Y, and Z? I think this book needs to be legitimized somehow. They need to yeah. bring out Legion of the First Prince. Um, and like I showed before, like they did it, they've done it once before. We had Warriors mm. of Chaos and Demons of Chaos. Slaves to Darkness is literally Warriors of Chaos. Yeah. Now we just need to legitimize Demons of Chaos as a faction. And I think you'll see much more people play the faction. I truly do. I think that's a big barrier to entry for mm. anyone who has to invest into models. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, I can easily see it slotting into slaves is like it's because it really only is, it's like two or three pages. So I could see it becoming its own sort of sub faction within, uh, well, not, not even a sub faction of slaves, just a separate thing within slaves. Um, uh, well, then I wouldn't be surprised if Beast of Chaos gets rolled in as well into a slave. That might be one barrier. But to me, if more people play it and GW sees that there's people that love this, there may be more of an impetus to. To, to make sure it continues so yeah i i would agree any final closing comments that you would share to your people the legion of the first, first prince 
Um, now I would uh, say that folks in the Discord are awesome. Um, hop into the LFP chat if you haven't in the AOS Coach Discord. The link is below. I will get paid for this, Coach. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of really great people in there. Uh, folks from all over the world playing this army, um, talking strats, and uh, it is a lot of fun. It's a great community. Um, and uh, if you haven't tried this army and you're curious, come on in, talk to us, um, throw your models on the table. Um, a lot of folks in there are happy to talk through um, and uh, uh, come join us. And I appreciate the opportunity, Coach, everything you do. Um, this was a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm curious to see the, the Fury meta that will arrive. I'm also curious, like if I, you know, the, the YouTuber in me says, you know, write me comments and, you know, tell me, but I'm legitimately interested for people, especially like the corn people and the slanish people that aren't doing quite well in the meta, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Nurgle and, and Zinch are holding their own. But I know a lot of people who are upset and frustrated with the lack of corn. And, you know, if the white dwarf indicates there's no battle tome coming anytime soon, what you got is what you got. I would be really curious for anyone who plays corn who is a demon player, obviously you can't bring like your wrath mongers and certain mm. things because they're obviously mortals, but take that demon list from Corn, bring it into Legion of the First Prince. Don't change a thing. Don't take Bellacore. Don't change a thing. And I'd be curious to see how that list plays and does it play better? Does it play worse? Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy things um, other than just trying to focus on blood tie and that mm -hmm. whole allegiance needs to be revisited. But yeah. I'd be curious to see what it looks like in Legion of the First Prince. And I think people will be surprised. I think it'll give you mm -hmm. a new lease on a faction that you love, but you're probably a little bit frustrated and hamstrung with things that aren't letting you do what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just bring your models over and give it a shot. What do you have to lose? All right, Sean, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, if everyone, and again, you know, Sean's a big member on the community. Uh, if you want to jump into the Discord, link is below. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll welcome you and you can all talk your secret list tech. You're all taking over, you dark master, corrupted chaos people. Um, any shout outs? Anyone you want to shout out? Not me and not my Discord. Like, shout any game club people? Yeah, the Free State, fin oh, over here, Free State Fanatics folks, um, Lawrence, a uh, bunch, great group of guys. And to everybody regionally, the uh, Great Plains Masters folks. Mitchum uh, down in Edmond, who's uh, uh, doing the Lord's work, compiling all those stats and uh, getting everything together. And, um, you know, Charles in Wichita, who's running Flying Monkey. Um, and uh, we got a bunch of, of really good guys here in the, the Great Plains region. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this community. And uh, I'm glad that they've let me be a part of this community. How could they not? All right, folks, let's wrap this up. Sean, you're a legend. Thank you, everyone, who joined us on the on the um, the live stream or if you listen to this on a replay, um, you know, all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, blah, 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 best day ever. All right, see you, Sean. See you, Sean. See you, everybody. Care, Coach. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so links down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigmar conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more fixes.